What's up, guys? How's your motherfucking day going? Oh, I shouldn't have cussed right off the bat. How's your day going? I am Thomas Dopeziola, whatever you want to call me. Welcome back to the Dope As Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, problems, drugs, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today's guest is someone you've been asking for nonstop, even though they're here all the time, but we figured it out. Marty O'Neill, Drastic <laughs> Graphics. What's up? What's up? Boy? What's up? Guys, uh, we finally figured it out. All the comments. We have Marty as a guest, but... He is on the show. Now I understand. Uh -huh. At the table is completely different. We figured out how he could run the tape, run the show with one hand. Yeah. And then focus on the yeah, camera yeah. over here. So here we go, guys. Um, what's up, Marty? Man, shit, we've been running around all day, making moves. Took us, man. We've been doing a lot like of stuff. We just came and sat down and shit. I know. We we've been, we've been together for five days. Sweat for five, five hours already. <laughs> we've been doing a bunch of stuff today, manufacturing, a bunch of weird, fun stuff behind the scenes stuff so you have no idea what i'm gonna ask you i have no notes and i'm uh -huh. just gonna start everyone knows where you're from you're from buffalo this episode guys is gonna be a little different because i don't want to ask you everything because we still have years of podcasts left uh -huh. i want to i want to i'm gonna do this and just skip Pick scenes yep because i know certain things you've told me we've never elaborated on ready where are you from, Marty? South Buffalo, New York. South Buffalo, New York. <laughs> so how was growing up yeah, in yeah. the early 90s of Buffalo? It was fucking awesome. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it was great. What the fuck? All our conversations? <laughs> Wait, what do, you, what do you mean nah, it was tight? I mean, yeah, from my childhood, like I always say, oh, my yeah, shit your was childhood simple. Was cool. I yeah. love, my childhood was great. Compared to like all my friends I ended up growing up with, like that's the one thing I always noticed. Like from zero to 15 on those formative years, it was peaceful in my life. Like, it was simple. It was like I said, me kicking a fucking ball around by myself. Like only it was child. The eighties. Like it was just old school. Yeah. Like roaming around the neighborhood and shit. It was wholesome. It was simple. You know, I didn't have compared to what other kids go through at that young age. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things, I had it very, very, yeah, the, very good. Uh, the homeward bound childhood. Like just the nice I have animals and, you know, my mom and dad are together. It's like some Sandlot shit. That's you know? great. Yeah. That's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. I always watch the Sandlot like, wow, these guys have a house in their own room and they play bass baseball and eat hot dogs on uh -huh. of July. Like, yeah. What? Like, I, it, it was it always simple. Like, my parents were hippies, though, like, prior to that. They were a little Please bit older elaborate. when they had me. Your dad is, was a hippie. Full-blown. Full-blown hippie. Yes. Your mom also? Yes. I didn't know that about your yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. Full- Full blown, full blown hippies, yeah. But my dad was like a musician too, so it was even like part so he's of it business was, hippie. Mm, mm, he didn't have a business side to him whatsoever. Oh. He was a musician. What did he do for work? Musician. He taught guitar and he gigged out. Oh, that's why he had the studio upstairs. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's a hit and miss with checks. He was consistent. He's he's a legend. He's in the after he passed, I accepted his induction to the Buffalo Music Hall of Fame. You didn't so, tell me that. Yeah, it was a big deal. He was, oh, wow, I didn't he's know like that. A, yeah, his his circle is like, you know, in the music scene, like legendary. No shit? Yeah. What'd your dad just play the guitar, right? Yep, and he sang. But he was in a couple big bands. Like, the night I was born, he was gigging out. The really? night I was born. And you keep saying gigging out in the Bay, that means you're on ecstasy dancing. <laughs> well, so that's why I'm like, uh, uh what do you no, mean no, he's no. gigging out? <laughs> no, in the 80s, that shit meant you're playing at a bar. You know, he's- Really? Yeah. I didn't know that, man. Mm -hmm. I did- out of all the times you talked about your dad, you never, I never know that. Yeah, yeah. Like they he was were, that badass. Mm -hmm. They were giving updates at the bar as like, while I was being born. Being born. born. He's <laughs> like, how is he? <laughs> a boy. Yeah, exactly. Sick. So I would have people, in, <laughs> random people in Buffalo come up to me like, I was You're there the, boy. the night you were born. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So now I see why he's like, oh, you're a rapper. Mm -hmm. I get it. He was just like, follow my footsteps more. He probably would have appreciated that. I get it. Everybody has their own path. I understand. Time. Also, if he wasn't pushing music on you at a young age before you started liking rap, that's his fault. He was. He was. He were was. you were you absorbing it? No. No, you didn't like like not really. I mean, I remember him trying to teach me music to, and shit. Not so much. Like I love it. 
I had I, I had all the shit you talking about. I had the uh, Paul Simon vinyl, the Beatles vinyl laying around. I remember all that, I love like that five shit. six years old. But I mean, I loved it. It was cool. But then I remember the first time I ever heard it. Can nobody take my pride? Uh, the puffy version. As yeah. soon as I heard that, it was over. I was obsessed. Really? Yeah, I was like seven, eight years old. Puffy, Mace, Biggie. Who are you hanging out with as a kid? There's like regular kids around your neighborhood? Yeah, kids I played, you know, neighborhood kids, sports kids. Were they influencing your music too? No. I was, it had, they had, my friends and my music had completely, we moved around a lot too. So by the time I was, uh, I don't know, six, we lived in a bunch of different places. So I had like, different friends but my friends weren't really super tied into like my music mm -hmm. until i was telling you like my brother got adopted he was i was like 11 he was like nine and then we were both as equally obsessed with hip-hop so you're on seven or eight you discover hip-hop you're an only child your mom and dad are hippies and then they adopt your brother well my my aunt and uncle did so your aunt your mom your dad's sister yeah. adopted some kid mm -hmm. and then eventually when he was like oh we can't handle this kid you adopt no 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 Right away, they just kind of paired us up off the bat. Oh, so, and eventually just like, you guys take care of me. He loves Marty. Well, they kept having, it didn't necessarily go smoothly. Oh. You know, after years, they were having fallen outs, and he ended up just kind of living at my house for a long time. At what age? He was in high school still, so probably like, he was probably 15. When you're 17-ish. Yeah. When you guys were just every day together. Yeah. The whole time we were every day together, because as soon as he moved in, even like, I would just live at his house the whole summer. I'd be at his house the whole summer. I'd be doing summer school there. I worked downtown. I was like, I, we had Delaware Park right there, like I was telling you about, directly oh, next door. We used to walk there every brother. day. Yeah, no, like we people looked at us weird because we really called each other brothers. Like we, we would introduce each other like that, but it was like on some white man can't jump shit. Like yeah. brothers, people wouldn't understand. Like, but the, the whitest kid in the me, world over here. Yeah, the people that knew, knew me knew what it was. Like they yeah. all respected that. Even my whole school understood because... Like I said, my uncle that was his like foster father was my basketball coach. So that even tied it in even deeper. He'd send us to basketball camp. He played basketball too? My uh brother? Hunt, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hunt, you know, light. 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 Yeah. So you're the basketball kid. So yeah, I, I was obsessed. Yeah. So we'd be at basketball camp all day. We'd be at Delaware Park all day. And then at night it's us out on the lowered rim. We never one time played a game that didn't end in a fight. Both of you guys fighting each other? Every single time we'd play one on one, it would no matter what. That and it would just be power dunking and just like you know power <laughs> dunking on the low rims, on the low rims on the seven dead eight end feet. street. Yeah, that's cool. That was that was summers though. We were just playing. That was the great thing about like my adolescence that really kept me out of trouble was basketball. I was fucking obsessed. So I was just out there, sun up to sundown. So you guys are always fighting, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling you there was a couple times like he had a lot of fucking issues. I mean, this kid was. I told you, I'm going to put all this business out there. Yeah, don't, you, like, you don't have to say his name. Don't put all this stuff out but there. But I was like talking about like what affects a kid at a super young age. And it's like. That's why you guys adopted him. He was situations like. Alone. Yeah. I mean, you get born into a messed up family. That family just leaves you with somebody who, you know, abuses you. You end up in the system. And by the time you're seven, eight years old, your fucking brain wiring is all fucked. Yeah. You didn't get the opportunity to develop properly. I. I was highly aware of that how different we were and like how just unfair it was to him because like we play basketball he'd take off his shirts he'd have fucking scars on his back and shit like mm. i could just he was so young and as the years went on i could just just tell like how deep that pain is when your ma leaves you like that mm -hmm. and it would come out like as we'd get a little bit older sometimes he'd get drunk and shit and it would come out start fucking talking about it but other than that he'd never talk about it Ugh. we just like joked it was like the honeydew we only yeah, just laughed made light of it. at everything got it <laughs> well you said your dad's funeral you guys were cracking jokes but, but that's only because it's all we did <laughs> i get it I it get really it. was like that i mean especially in situations like that so your like, dad fucked with them too yeah my dad actually liked him a lot you know like they weird, they related they related what yeah. a weird relationship just he's literally just getting passed to families it's and like even stuck. while he was with him while he like he was like being fostered he came in he's being fostered 9 10 11 he gets you know put into a different school all this like there were still times where he got kicked out and he went back in the system like when i was when i was playing college basketball he got kicked out for like threatening my aunt or some shit went back in the system went to a house got kicked out of that house and then ended up deep on the fucking east side on glenwood and box or some shit 
Delavan over there. I remember going over there. I brought, I remember I brought him my Dreamcast going over there in the snow. Him like, he's not even supposed to be going, running out, hopping in my car. Like, it was fucking weird. He's living with a whole other family and shit. But then. He grew up with you. Now he's with another family. That's yeah, weird. Because there's families that'll have foster kids just for the check. Just, so yeah, you yeah, have for some sure. elderly. Now you're just running the fucking east side on free room. And it's fucking deadly over there. So he was over there. And then, I mean, that's where he was originally started at. Then he came back and he was like staying in my mom's basement for a long time. And we we're, you know, and, but then he started getting into robberies and shit. And yeah, I, I wasn't knowing about it until I saw him on the news. Oh, <laughs> whack. Yeah. So he started just like, oh, what a bummer. Hanging out with some kids that I, I knew about, but I didn't know. I hung out with dudes that were doing shit, but they weren't fucking overt scumbags. These kids were fucking scumbags. But he felt like, because my aunt and uncle moved out to like the suburbs, like the legit suburbs. They built a house, moved away from Delaware Damn. Park. And now he's the only black kid out in a white neighborhood. And he like got, found a couple other ghetto ass kids. And then they went, ended up robbing a bank and robbing a couple other things. They didn't get caught. That's why you said the day my brother got bank robbery charged. Mm -hmm. That's the same brother. All of the stories you told me is the same guy. This is this is the only dude I grew up with like that. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah, so he ended up doing three years. And then, and then while you're doing that, you're doing music and going to school. My Yeah. That, like, when he went to prison, I had just met April. I was on my, like, was at my biggest peak of, like, my music, my hottest fucking point. So when he really went into there. prison, you already had yeah. that song on the radio and shit? Yes. I was really, really getting deep into it. And he was there with me every single step of the way. We were there... He was there from way before day one. All the shit I was writing about was, it was like your Uncle John. They're like when you were telling that story, it was exactly like that. But I was older than him. Got you. You're you know. together all day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like we shared a bed. He slept on the floor. He slept like we slept in the attic together. When he'd get his bike stole, I was, I'd fucking get it back for him. That type of shit. Damn. I, I, I totally understand the relationship now. Yeah. So you, he goes to prison. You get out, you already have a baby? Uh-huh. Oh, when he whoa. went in. When he went in, it was looking like I was going to be the one going in. Just based on where I was at in life at oh, that point. Oh, you're just point. doing stupid shit? I was on some just get rich or die trying. I, I was just on some like, it's going to take. I don't know like what it's going to take to make it, but I'm willing to do whatever the fuck it takes at this point. I was at a real fork really at that juncture in my life. Like, no, you know undeniably me and him were not me i never i was always a positive role model in his life i always looked at myself as a positive role model for him and like his bigger brother mm -hmm. but he knew what i was i was getting wrapped up in all kinds of shit outside of my life with him too especially when i started really going ham with the music and then when he went down like my dad was dying we thought he was gonna die at that point it was one of those times i thought jamal was gonna go for like 15 years Ugh. And it was just like, it was so fucking horrible. It was really, really, really horrible. Because there was like, he sat downtown for a year before we even knew it was going to happen. And then they sentenced him. Luckily, he was under 18. Oh, so they, they didn't try But they as weren't adult. going to. They, no, well, they, they were trying to yes, try him as an adult. My uncle pulled strings and because he's like that, that and finessed that shit. Good. But, I mean, it was fucking horrible. But while he was in there... By the time he came, when he went in, I was fucking just like out there. Basically, I didn't have I only had like potential going on, but it didn't look great. I just graduated high school. I mean, I had a job and shit, but I was doing shit that definitely could have got me arrested on the regular. And then um, by the time he came out, I had the 300 seat. I had a house. I had a kid. That's that era. I had threw him a fucking the iPad touch when he came out. He didn't know what the fuck it was that. And it was like that. We were hanging out at my house. Nice. And we had about a year where it was awesome. He's back in the studio with me every day. Now I'm almost, I'm getting like record deals and shit now. I'm making a real push now. It's no yeah. longer like I'm out of, I'm networking outside of Buffalo now when he gets back. The, the songs, I had a stretch where I was going into the studio and every time it was for an executive. Nice. Meaning... I'm going back and forth with these fucking fools and they're saying, just give me this, just give me that, just give me this, just give me that. And he was there for every session. Like if you want follow Griselda, all those studios you see them in. The now, same ones you're in, right? A lot of them, yeah. Yeah, you always tell me, like, it's crazy seeing these Griselda posts, man. Like that's the studio I was recording in. Yeah. Because I know when I first brought up Griselda, you go, from Buffalo, Griselda? I go, they're hard. He goes, yeah, but they're real gangsters. <laughs> He's like, I didn't want to chill there no more because I was like, oh, these fools are... 
on some serious shit. I'm yeah. out. Well, if you're if you know Buffalo, what I'm about to say is some legendary shit. There was a time I, I've been in every studio in Buffalo. Anybody who was doing music in Buffalo at that time, I had networked with at some point. I sat with DJ Shea in the Buff City Records, and he sat there and listened to my music and was talking about my beats. And you know, he just passed away. He was the that's the guy you're talking to me about. Biggest DJ in Buffalo. He's the conduit to oh, a lot COVID, of this. Right? Yeah, as far as oh. I think so. I'm not sure, but I think so. He's responsible for a lot of this stuff that you see, this legendary shit, this never before seen shit coming out of Buffalo that might not seem big to people, but it inspires a whole goddamn city. Yeah, it was a small city. When well, not a, even a small city, like a poor city. When you have a poor small city that doesn't have a lot of jobs and opportunity and you have a big sports team like Cleveland when LeBron's there, like Pittsburgh when the Steelers are winning the Super Bowl, it makes the vibe of the city different because it gives hope. It gives That's true. pride. A hundred percent. Look at Oakland when the Oakland Raiders are killing it. Everyone's outside fucking what's up? Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, Yeah, there's life here. Yeah. Like it, it's yeah. different. Everybody has a little more pep and shit. Like yeah. the old jackets come mm -hmm. out, the starter jacket. Yeah. It's just uh yeah, it's the pride thing. When I was there, it was the opposite of that. It was like the like reverse of like, oh, everything's oh, oh, we always fucking lose. Everything's oh, oh this uh, it's always gray clouds out. It's uh, it was like it felt like that more. That's Buffalo. That's what it was when I was, I mean, because even if you grew up in LA and you grew up in the worst part of LA, you can even, you can always look and be like, this person did it. That person did it. Yeah. Well, there's, there's not so I much. can 10 minutes from here. Yeah, like, yeah, that had never, we had Rick James, like there was nobody, there was no, and there's no direct opportunity. And a lot of it was pre-internet or before I was, you're able to really like establish connections. Well, that's why the kids look up at trap, trap stars. Mm -hmm. Like, well, he's making it. He's got a fucking brand new S, S class. He's I'm got broke a as fuck. house. Yeah. I'm he's struggling. not struggling. And of course, you're going to look at that guy. Oh, he's got a super pretty girl with him. Oh, all the other girl. It's the most tempting thing ever. Like, what does he do? Just selling stuff? That's it? And then you get into like, oh, he's pop fools. He's robbing people. Oh, oh. Everything that comes with that. Everything. That, you can't sell Coke without shooting somebody. It just doesn't work. Unless you're, you're a high-end dude in L.A. selling sacks to these people at fucking nightclubs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. You have to be willing to pop somebody. made me somebody. think of the dude, uh, the, the Colombian dude in Paid in Full when you said that. Or? Uh, uh, Lu Lulu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lulu. <laughs> yeah. See this? Even Lulu got it, though. Yeah. He knows what's up, too. He even got popped mm -hmm. in that nice-ass apartment building. Mm -hmm. Great movie. Watch Paid in Full. Sorry, DJ Shea. Let's go back. First time in existence, I remembered what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. Back. You said I was about to say some legendary shit. DJ Shea, mm -hmm. go. Yeah. I mean, I sat with him. We listened to my music, all that. And even in that moment, that was like, oh, uh, man, I, I could do the math on it. It was like probably 2005, 2006. I was aware of like Benny back then. He had already been out. He had been, he was already. When I brought him up, you said, oh, these guys been around yeah yeah you told me yeah me that's the important everything. part to it because it's not like they just popped off there's years of real work and they did it independently granted they became well known when they signed with eminem and jay-z and all this other shit but that is an independent record label that came deep out of the streets and is flooding the mainstream right now and they're keeping it pretty i mean super authentic to their own sound that's what i love about it too is they have their own sound you could be like oh it sounds like wu-tang that's kind of a really super generalized statement because yeah, it sounds so. like Griselda. They have their own. I don't think they sound like anybody else I heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's the East Coast. I hear that uh -huh. in a lot of people, but this is the accent. We're not looking for the accent. It's That's the, authenticity. It's the sound. Like, yeah. Like I told you, I go, oh, I don't know who these guys are, but you ever heard of Gris And you go, he, he from Buffalo. Go, uh -huh. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah. When I first I heard, I go, who the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. Like I said, gangst, gangster ass lyrics, but are good jack of shit. I'm all over yeah. it. I'm all over it, man. Yeah. I loved it. That shit gets me fired up. I know. Every time you pull up, I'm like, yo, Marty's in that crazy mood. What the <laughs> bumping, right? Every time, and it opens the door, I'll fucking shoot you. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> every time. I can hear you. Uh -huh. Every time. That's hilarious. Um, so you're in Buffalo. You come out, or your brother gets out of jail. You have one year of everything going good, all your shit's happening, and then you don't have to get into it, but you guys had a fallen out. Yeah, yeah. So I, it was when I got my record deal with DJ Ski. So I was using this service called Blaze Track. It's still around, but it's different now. It's owned by different people than originally. And Blaze Track was the first, really let me make connections. It said, put together a press kit, you pay for the credits, and you send it directly to the record exec, and Whoa. they give you a video response to your thing. So that was my shit. I made 
hundreds of submissions. I spent thousands of dollars on Blaze Track, but it, it paid off in the sense that Blaze Track noticed. Blaze Track made me a Blaze Track Pro eventually. I've spun the tables around and I ended up getting this. I, I kind of became like the poster boy for Blaze Track with this deal I got with DJ Ski. Wow. And then that, so when that happened, I remember it was me, Jamal, and my boy Malachi. Malachi had gotten his apartment. Malachi, we were talking about the cultures and like, in, in Lackawanna and shit where I'm from, you got the Yebanese community, you got your white people, you got your black people, you got your Puerto Ricans. So Malachi was um, Yemen, half Yebanese, but wild boy, like wild, but I knew him since he was super young. When Jamal went to jail, I bumped into him. And he's like, basically like, bro, let me like, I want to do music. Like and me and him just like, while Jamal was in prison, me and him, he became like Jamal. So when Jamal came out of prison, it was the three of us. Got you. I had, I had known him since he was a kid. We had played basketball in Beth Park for years. I did like his, you know, I knew Malachi and I respected his passion. He came from a fucked up circumstances too. Parents selling drugs, growing up, him being involved, all that type of shit. Robberies, all that type of shit. So, <laughs> 10 minute clock, right? Yeah, it's been yeah, passed. Oh, shit, it's 25. Yeah, it's whatever. been passed, but we, yeah, yeah. it's us. <laughs> We're going to talk for hours. I already uh, know it. But anyway, the three of us became really close and they started to kind of, thank you, sir, make their own little relationship. And Malachi got, you know, his girl had an apartment or whatever. And I remember we're hanging out over there and, and Jamal was like, bro, this is real. You got a fucking record deal. But he wanted me to basically leave April and Ariana and the three of Doctor. us go move out to fucking California. He's like, because he had a job. He didn't have any responsibility. My uncle hooked him up with a job when he got out. So what? he didn't have any bills. He was making money a little. I mean, when I say making money, he was making the money you make when you have a job and don't have bills. Got you. And my uncle is a professional accountant. So when he got out, he had his shit together for him. Good. So he but, wanted you to leave April but, and your baby. Basically, just so you guys can go pursue the music. Yeah. On some, no. you know, and Fuck I mean, no. so that's what I said. And he, he got real fucking offended because he didn't like, you know, mind you, I had just gotten married. He's my best man. Both these fools are my best men at my wedding. Uh, you know, he was out for you to get married. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. he's my best man. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so mm. is that of that pod you got? No, I got different weed. It's mm. different weed. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. Marty's literally <laughs> staring at his joint. Just, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fire. Uh, he was your best yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, he got anyway, offended. So there at was that? no, there was no tension. He didn't. Him and like April got along. There was nothing weird. Something weird happened in his mind where he really started resenting me, like having a family. Like, I can't just effortlessly smoke blunts all throughout the house like one might. I can't just go to California like one might. And he starts oh, like I looking at me like, like this motherfuckers. Would, you know, like, meanwhile, fuck out of here. This is my goddamn life. And your child. And I'm on it, by the way. I'm the only one with this shit going on. Let's not like I'm at this. I'm the only one at the steering wheel of this operation. These fools are tagging along. But it's your brother, so you're going to bring him along forever. I get it. I get it. He's at every studio session. He's at he's at everything. So I remember we were hanging out one time during this like little period. It was the first time I ever listened to a podcast with him. I put on Rogan and Diaz while we were playing. Uh, we were playing like 2K or live or whatever. And we were playing and it was all good. And then like April came home. It was late. And he started acting real fucking weird on some nah I'm, I got something to tell you but I'm, I'm not gonna tell you nah, 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 nah don't even worry about it I mean, he started doing that type of shit to you or her to both of us like I got something to tell you about her what? just like started acting real weird out of fucking nowhere and I was like it's the last time I ever saw him no yeah this is the last time I ever saw him Your so brother? yeah so I was like, and I, and he's like, he gets up to leave and I like slap him up. I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? You're acting real fucking weird. He's like, nah, 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 nah. And he just left. And, uh, 
it like we but we had like a it was like a falling out as he, like it was went from us just chilling to us having a weird falling out and him leaving in real quick like it's the last time you saw your brother yeah so what the fuck i mean it goes on so like and it's weird i know it sounds weird but that's literally what happened so he he basically like starts spreading all these like really really like horrific rumors i guess you would say but within my like family just shit that's like not About you guys yeah just not even like out of not even Maybe fucking he just, true he's like he's, yo the only person that's with me now has a family that i never had and now he's gone he forever. doesn't you gotta think from none him. of my friends even know what a functional family looks like i get it but from <laughs> his perspective he just got out of prison he's never had a family you're yeah. the only family he yeah. knows and now your family has a family and now he's secondary to that. Yeah, for sure. He just got upset. I get yeah. it. He, remember, he's probably still younger he, in his head. Yeah, he's I mean, he's still uh, he's probably twenty, fresh out of prison. He was in grown man's prison. Yeah, fresh I don't out know of prison. What bro. happened in there? All we ever did was really joke about it, but it started to get really tense, and we were on bad terms for like a week. We didn't see each other. We didn't really talk. It was tense. Was that happened that fast? Yeah, but then my daughter's birthday party came rolling around. First birthday. Fourth birthday. Oh, that's right. He was in jail for three years. Okay. She's turning four. She calls him Uncle Mel. Like, this is her uncle. I go to Walmart to get the birthday cake. Some other shit that we need. Walmart's like 10 minutes away. And when I get to Walmart, I get a call from April. Yo, Jamal and Malachi just showed up here. I'm like, why the fuck? I call Jamal, no answer. I call Malachi. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you boys are doing there. But we haven't even talked. Like, obvious, it was to the point that I was like, obviously don't come to this fucking party right now. We There was like big tension. We need to fucking talk. Don't be there when I come back. I'm coming back right now. Hung up. When I get back there from Walmart 10 minutes later, I'm like getting the cake and cashing out. And then I leave and I fly home. The cops are there. The cops are at your house? Yes. The birthday party? Yes. And this is in the suburbs. We had moved out. Oh, they got there fast then. They got there fast as fuck. <laughs> they got there fast. Because like they got there I told you we moved to New Jersey. We moved back to New Jersey. We lived in my mom's house for a while. And then we moved out for a year to a nice house on the lake. And that's where you were. That's where we were. Cops showed up. Yes. And because he had this whole fucking big meltdown. He's pouring beers over everybody's face. Having a fuck threatening all my girls at the party. And this is a four-year-old's birthday party. He just came in and fucking like blew the party up basically to the point that the Someone neighbors or somebody cops. called the cops on him and then got the fuck out before I even got back. That's fucked up. And then after that happened, that caused the whole ripple effect of issues within my family. And then super high tension in the air to the point that it was fucking super high tension in the air for up until basically me moving to California. Bro. You just said super high tension in the air to the point where it was super high tension in the air. You're high as fuck Ooh. right now. <laughs> Try to emphasize. I get it. So you guys are basically like, so one of us got to kill each other. That's how I could. I just knew he was fucking crazy basically at that yeah, time. Yeah, he's your brother. You know what he's capable of. Yeah. Yeah, and he's more mad at you and you're his brother. Yeah. I'm mad in the sense of like, this motherfucker, how dare you? Are you like, no? Of all days. And, and my other boys wrapped up on his side of the shit, too. The Malachi guy. Yeah. So, and like I said, I was already falling back from all my friends at that point. I was getting deep into Rogan. I was getting really serious about music to the point that I didn't want to be helping out a bunch of other people with it. I was focused on myself. I wasn't bringing a thousand people to the studio. I wasn't tr You were pushing. growing up? Yeah, I was growing up. I yeah. had a family. Yeah. You have a fucking kid and a I, wife. Bro. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you yeah. You have four friends at that point. Yeah, you dial it back by ninety percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tag hang out with three people. It went, yeah, but at that, I mean, that was my closest inner circle, uh, and it just it kind of put me in a dark place for a while. It fucking it really did. But at the same time, you're it, saying like in terms of with him. Oh, for sure, with you, him. Because you moved away. How much? How long after? So, birthday party, beer pouring on. people. Imagine this. Birthday party is. Birthday is June 25th. I fly out to California for the first time, September 11th. So I flew out to California for the first time two months after this happened. You guys haven't talked after that? No. Just tension in the air. 
Wait, wait, I, wait, I wait. talked to the kid Malachi, and, and he. What happened? What did he say? So I gotta know, bro. I never what asked do you, you this. What do you mean, like? What did he say? Like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with these? You guys showing up at the party and crashing it? He didn't have an excuse. I didn't. Talk, I hadn't talked to him. I never talked. Oh, you, to didn't, him. you never talked to Malachi. Oh yeah, with that, yeah, basically, like, oh, I didn't know it was gonna go like that. I didn't think he was gonna oh, do that. Oh, so he just he just got pissed. And, uh, but but, but uh, come fight me then if you want to. Just uh, come fucking fight me then if you just want like. Oh. It was like that. Like he didn't know how to. These motherfuckers are immature as fuck. They don't know what the fuck. Hold on, you guys are also kids at the time. Yeah, you guys are now in your thirties, all of you. And the way I grew up, I cut like I would quick cut you cut out you of off. my life very very quickly. I love doing that. I love going. Oh, I'll never talk to you again because it makes me go. I'm not going to waste any more time. I know what kind of person you are now. Thank God I didn't do this for three more years. Yeah. But, I mean, I didn't want to do that at all. Of course not. your fucking brother and best friend. Yeah. And I didn't foresee it. And it was over. It was literally over, over nothing. nothing ex- you didn't do anything. Yeah. You just living your life. I was pushing forward with life. That's it. And you're still hanging out with the guys. Just not as much. Yeah. I Some live- people get upset at that, man. Apparently so. I mean, I, w- I really hope that they think different now because... Cause uh, you didn't I'm, do anything wrong. I'm fucking sorry uh, if you know we you got a kid trying. in the house and we're not smoking hella blunts in here. Yeah, that's it. So fucking sorry. That was like basically what it was. So sorry if you feel like we're not fucking gangsters or some shit. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. <laughs> that sucks, man. But so you guys had a falling out. You moved to California. So I said I went to Cal. I did ten days in Cali. The California campaign thing, right? Yes. So so I think have we talked? We talked about this a little bit on the podcast. Did we? I don't remember. Yeah, we talked about it on like episode two. So the quick version. Shit was epic. You went to California because you were meeting DJ It relates to our last episode. So we remember Goofy from the fucking last episode we did, right? Yeah. The guy Goofy that stole the weed. He stole the weed. When he stole that weed, he came out to the West Coast. And linked you. And linked me. Inadvertently. Yeah, the next call I got with him, he's all fucking Goofy. I hadn't talked to him. He's leaving me voicemails, blowing me up. He's all fucking good. <laughs> He's blowing me up. Bro, I'm on the West Coast. I got all this weed. I'm with Snoop. Snoop can't finish my joints. That's not true. I'm with fucking Dr. Dre. I'm in the studio. And at first, I'm like, all right, bro, you owe me two zips. Some time had passed. Wait, he walked who for the zips? My boy. Which one? The one the that, crazy fuck. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, he's your standard street dude, crazy. I mean, no, he's but not the way extra. you told me, we can't really say everything, but he's it, a crazy motherfucker. Yeah. 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 Regular crazy, you're walking for some zips. I mean, Jesus Might Christ. Shoot you. Yeah, for sure. And it's not just him, it's his cousins. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I end up getting back on the phone with this kid, and it was all fucking goofy ass nonsense, but he did end up linking me with a kid who worked at Interscope Records, who legitimately was Dr. Dre's intern. So I made that connection through that and then cut Goofy the fuck back off again forever. Yeah, so thanks, man. Thanks for those two zips I paid for you. We're this even. is repaying. This is repaying me. We're even. So uh, stayed in touch with him for a while. Like you said earlier, people with music, I'm fucking pitching myself to this kid. He's younger than me. He's from Texas. He's interning out there. I'm getting him on the phone. He's answering. I'm just going in on him, rapping at him and shit. On the phone? Yes. Oh, <laughs> shit, Marty. So then... Uh, you were the, the guy with the is, oversized pants pulling mixtapes out the oversized pants. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 30? Yeah, if it's 30 wide. Uh-huh. Big pants. <laughs> uh, so I signed a deal with DJ Ski. My boys had to like, a lot of a lot of my boys in Lackawanna threw a little like concert right before I left inadvertently. And it felt like a going a away party, party, kind of. It felt like a college reunion. Like everybody in the town knew what was going on. They're all patting me on the fucking back and shit. I was like, okay, it's Your happening. Brother's not there. No. No, me and him are just at odds over fucking oh, nothing. Oh man, that's such a sad fucking. He would have been too. Of course, and that'd be the most ult- the ultimate. Like yeah, that was like I was saying the only. So you celebrated by yourself in your head, basically. I mean, it's me and April. We're a team at this point. I'm talking about with your homies that yes. were there before. I mean, I still had a lot of other ones though. But he was just the closest by far. Any of my close friends would have looked at Jamel like, oh, he's as close as fucking by far because yeah. I knew him when we were together when we were little kids. <laughs> but anyway, so September 11th, I fly out. And now, mind you, I'm staying with this kid. Chris, this is a funny story in and of itself. First, my 10-day stint out here in L.A. I've never been out here before. 
I fly out September 11th. I land. He had gotten funny prior. Bro, I don't know if you're going to be able to do the landlord this. He had start, you know, just throwing me off my goddamn game a little bit. I'm like, fuck that. I'm coming. Be there, bitch. Period. Yeah. So he, we did. We got there. He's cool. He picks me up. His girl's with him. Now his girl right away, I can tell she's weird. She starts right away going in with the, oh, you're from Buffalo. You must know all about the mafia and all about the Illuminati. and What? All the, yeah. Like, what the fuck does that know. mean? You, the, like, well, you're from Merced. You know how to cook crack, right? But, <laughs> I don't know a goddamn no, thing about it. Cook crack. I mean, I'm aware that that's a thing, but I'm not. I don't know. I, I don't fucking know anything about this. You must know about she the mafia. <laughs> going down this whole conspiracy theory route. As we're driving in from LAX, meanwhile. Oh, man. You got a jersey on. Listen to conspiracy <laughs> theories. And fuck I'm like bitch. looking around at LA for the first time. Like, oh, my God. And I said, this is no, real. No. I'm here. She's like, yeah, and, and then I'm seeing, I remember there's like a fire off in the distance. I'm like, bro, there's a fucking fire going on over there. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's normal. There's just smoke billowing over the hills. It's fine. That's a trip, though. You coming out here to meet DJ Ski, to meet all these people and going, this is my first eyes on California. Yeah, it was surreal. So when you I flew had, in, I know you were staring out the window. You were that guy. Oh, I was on a goddamn mission. Oh my God, I, oh, I missed. I almost man. missed those days because I was just, when you're all potential, you're like, I got nothing but a shit ton of potential and hard work. Like, I'm. Please. That's you right now. You know that, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't change, motherfucker. Everything you kept saying, like, you mean this morning? That's funny. <laughs> just but, a different field. So, just this, this little chapter is funny. So, we start, he's driving me around now. He starts dropping this bitch up. So, he, he drops her off. At, we go to Bel Air. The first place we go is Bel Air. Damn. Okay. I'm like, <coughs> Fresh Prince is my reference. I already knew it. He drops her off. He's like, oh, she's a homeopathic uh, healer. She gets out. There's this giant, massive gate. She, whatever. We go down, and now we go to eat in West Hollywood. I don't know what West Hollywood is. The waiter walks up to us without a shirt on. <laughs> oh, you went to Boys Town. I don't fucking, I yeah, guess it's so. Yeah, West Hollywood's like a, like, there's like a gay area. I told you I went with my uncle. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, wild. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was fun, but it was wild. So like we ate there, then we went and picked her back up, and then we like went and dropped her off at another place, like another appointment. So she's a hooker. Come to find out, I'm not even sure if this fucking fool's aware of this or not. She's a hooker. She's a, yeah, this bitch. So yes, his girlfriend. Yes, he doesn't realize. I don't. I don't she's think he a does. Fucking hooker. I don't think he does. He thinks she's his, just like her his girlfriend. A homeopathic healer. Does she bring a bag? Does she bring? tools <laughs> a table i don't Andy. <laughs> <laughs> there was no fucking folding table with her we were in a challenger the first thing you do uh -huh. is go on a whole run yes in california like a gta mission love it i love it drop the hoe off to get to your next rap battle <laughs> that's you so then on the way home we pick up her friend and this bitch is this bitch is overtly like I can tell something's wrong with this bitch. This bitch next to me now. So we drive back. Now we they're in Burbank. How old are you? Twenty three or twenty four, twenty five maybe. Oh I don't God, remember what year it was. Dragged around L.A. It was fine. Thing. It was amazing. I was in awe. I'm just saying with the hookers in your yes. car. Yes, I didn't realize at first. This that didn't goofy dawn on me until really afterwards. Really goofy. <laughs> We're not understanding. He's. But, this uh, this is this isn't goofy at this. This is I mean he is this kid Chris is goofy as fucking shit. Oh, that's too. what you meant. It was that guy. No, but the, no, no, no. This is the dude. <sighs> this is my referral from Goofy One to Goofy Two. Here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so and by the so Chris is fucking goofy in a different way. In like he's in a, goofy a good way. Fucking like in a nice way. Yeah. Uh, Being goofy is cool. Being uh yes goofy exactly is different yes. It's so subtle. Yeah. So Chris graduated from college. He's out there working at Interscope. Yeah. You know. Oh, he's the Interscope guy. Yes. He doesn't realize she's a hooker. Okay. No. So you pick up the second Chris one. Chris is probably weird. 19, 20 years old. We pick up her oh. friend. The friend is a little bit older. The friend might be fucking 40 for all I can tell. Okay. We get back. They live in Burbank. In this, like, I get there and I realize it's a house, but there's like eight people living in this house and they're all 20 and they're all actors and they all pay for a room. So they're from all over the world, it's basically. Dirty. Yeah, dirt, yeah, yeah. It's there's dirty. that. So I'm starting to piece all this together. I wasn't given the rundown on the whole situation. That's where you I were staying. There. Yes. So you stay on the floor in one of these rooms. Woo! I know exactly where you slept. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> so we sit down on the couch, and the and her friend starts going, 
Uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in like the entertainment business. Like, what are you you're here for music? Oh, I entertain cool. dicks is what she should have so, said. <laughs> so she goes a couple times throughout the night. She had been like, oh, man, maybe you should give me some music for our like, work, projects we're working on. All this shit. Now we're at the house. They're all doing bong rips and getting comfortable and shit. Cool. This bitch goes, I produce veggie porn. She sticks vegetables. Porn her that features vegetables. Wait, like vegetables banging or she bangs herself with vegetables? I didn't I, ask. There's, you should have asked. Oh, like. Like, I, like <laughs> you should have really asked, like, yo, are you trying to tell me that you make vegetables have sex with each other? Are you like, like breeding like, like are you are shit? you just slapping toys together like kids or are you as having as, sex with as cucumbers? As soon as she said that, <laughs> Chris's roommate goes, do you know what the fuck he's here out? Do you know what the fuck he's here for? This kid's got a record deal. He's not doing your porno shit. Are you fucking kidding yes. me? The 40-year-old lady? Yes, he said that to her. Oh, that's mean, bro. That's <laughs> but mean. But I was like in shock and awe. But in my mind, I'm like, thank hey, you. Hey, Kid Buffalo. Oh, I do veggie porn. Marty just, oh my fucking God. Kick me back to the fucking Buffalo. <laughs> so far, this holistic I thought it was fucking veggie hilarious. porn and a charger. Yep. So I went to bed after that. So that was right just after like, that. I went to bed after that. <laughs> Wait, you're all in the same room, though. No, it's Did a you house. Just turn her over. We were in the living room, oh. so I just slept in the floor of one of the bedrooms. Okay, got you. So we so he scolded that woman. His Chris's roommate did. Now they're showing me commercials, like they literally show me a Nike commercial. They're all playing basketball and shit. But that's me. That's me, real quick. Like flash across oh, the screen. That's what this house is. Yes. Mm. I always found that kind of like sad. I always felt a little bad for those because it they really sad. want it. Because the one couple you know I mean? in there was like screaming at each other the whole time. One of those. They were all scared of the landlord. They are all scared of the cops or the weed. They were acting like weed was illegal, which was weird. But uh, anyway, so I wake up the next day. All right. We start driving through. We start driving to LAX because he's got to take his girl and drop her off. She's going to Utah or something. I remember she's going to Utah. So he's taking her to LAX, but they're fighting. The whole time. The, the hooker. Yeah. Um, his, yeah. His the girlfriend. Hooker. Okay. <laughs> so we're driving through Hollywood and we're with his, this kid, uh, Scott, that is Chris's friend. Scott's chill, kind of hippie dude. And we're just driving through Hollywood and they start, and then they, somebody from the ski lodge calls me and goes, ski's about to leave. You're not even going to get them fucking meet him. He's about to fly out. He's going to Toronto. So I was literally like, let me out. I didn't even know where we were. We were in Hollywood somewhere. I hopped out. And said, find me later. I remember I had the... Did you have a phone? Oh, yeah. yeah I had the iPhone call. 4S. Okay. I remember because I was rapping about it. <laughs> Damn, the 4S. <laughs> yeah. When I was 4S is right when I started doing Instagram. Mm-hmm. Me too. If you go... I've had fans go back all the way to the bottom of my timeline and comment on the first post. Yeah, that's and it's, funny. it's from my 4S. Oh, shit. I love it. Like It's from this time. Where it all started. About. These pictures I've talked about are the very first pictures. So, uh, okay. So I hop out on foot. Scott's had lived in Hollywood. He helps me find the ski lodge. We were within walking distance from where we hopped out at. I get up. I now. What are the odds of that? Very rare, small odds. It wasn't in even all LA, that far. You hop out. You just get there like a fucking sitcom. It worked out to the point wow. that we walked up to the door, but now I had Scott with me. Which I wasn't thrilled about. I don't even know this dude. I've been going through so much shit. So, but it ended up working out good. So, like, we go in there. I sit down. I would have been just sitting in there by myself in their lobby. But Scott's with me. So now I kind of have somebody to talk to. I'm not just sitting there by myself. I see Ski walk. And this was huge at the time. Wiz Khalifa was just in there. I Heart Radio's in there. Nipsey Hussle had just gotten signed to him. Recorded his album in there. All the big West Coast acts. Like, Ski was one of the biggest legendary West Coast hip-hop DJs, period. Mm -hmm. So, uh, camera crews following him around. Yo, that was a shock the yeah. fuck out of you. Mm -hmm. So then I just walk up to him. He's like, what's up, man? What's up? Uh, whatever, whatever. Kind of like, basically, I mean, bro, I'm fucking out here over our deal. It's public. Yeah. Blaze Track's promoting this. Um, but he just, we slapped each other up and he just fucking left. So. That's it? No. No, I'm saying that's it. That's all you that, said? That's that, all they got to have? That was it. You, we literally, it was less than I fucking said to 50 Cent. Oh, <laughs> no. When he walked away, were you? did you feel the heartbreak? I didn't know I wasn't going to talk to him again. 
Oh. Uh, <laughs> that would have fucking pissed So me I just kind of sat back down because I'm here to record. I mean, I'm out there to record. You just wanted to meet him before he left type shit and talk. I didn't even realize he was leaving. I thought he was going to be there the whole fucking time. I didn't know him leaving wasn't a part of it. So. Okay. So, yeah, he leaves. Now. I think I just leave, maybe even come back that night later. Okay, no, no, no. This is exactly what happened. We okay, so I linked back up with Chris. He picked me back up. Uh, they had given me a brand new beat while I was there. They were like, This is trap step. We want to see if you can rap because it was a licensing deal, meaning they place songs that you make on video games and when in TV shows. Oh, and shit. it was a, that was the point of the record deal, it was a licensing deal. So they gave me a brand new beat. I had all this music ready. They said, here, let's record this tomorrow. They gave me a brand new beat, and it was on some trap step, dubstep shit. Okay. This is legendary in my world because I took that beat back. We made it back to the house. I took my little bit of weed, went back, sat on the floor, and just zoned out. And I remember it was different than how I wrote most songs because I just closed my eyes, and I wrote on a blank page all the most random words that could come to mind from just this crazy little chapter I was in. And then I just kind of looked at it, and I just picked out random words. I ended up picking out Kiwi Nights, Purple Days. Wait, stop. Uh-huh. Is this how you made songs? This is how I made this song. You just wrote down words? Just in this case. This isn't how oh. I usually did it. Okay, okay. I but I so usually wild. don't write and record the next day. I usually have the song memorized before I even go in. I've worked it out. I've recorded a rough copy. Got you. They're putting me on the spot. I have shit prepared. So, I mean, I go in there, I blank it out, I blank out, I have the song memorized by the time I'm done writing it, which is different. By the time I wake up that morning, I'm ready to go. Now, another funny layer of the story. His girl's gone. So it's me and Chris now, which is what I wanted, because Chris is cool, and he's an engineer and shit. Like, we're about to execute. Uh, But... Chris's girl has a kid, and this is her car. The challenger they have is hers and her baby daddy's. Okay? And they have a kid together. Now, her baby daddy is Debo, for all intents and purposes. This fool is fresh out of prison. He looks like Debo. He acts like Debo. He's the real-life fucking Debo out of South Central. All right? Oh, no. So now, oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. go. So now, uh, Chris is like, uh, "Bro, do you think we could use the car to like drop my boy off at the studio?" He's type asking of shit? her fucking uh, baby the new daddy. boyfriend. Yes, goofy ass. Okay, Chris is Calls probably nineteen. The- He's calling her baby daddy. This fool's probably thirty three. That's so fucking pathetic. Bro. It's like a it's like a reality show. Okay, he's on the bus. He had the car. He had the their car, okay? The dad, the baby's no, dad? No, Chris, Chris had, we had the car. Oh, so. But it was like the dad needed it to drive the kid back and forth to school and shit also. Oh, so he's calling like, yo, I'm going to take the car type we shit. We were trying to work it out. The dude ended up being cool as fuck, okay? Debo, <sighs> all right? But it was funny as shit because the dynamic between him and Chris. Father and son. Is, yes. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, I don't have sex with the, you know, your baby's <laughs> mom, but. Well. I'm her driver, and you come to find out, well, we've never kissed. I mean, she's, I want to go out with her. <laughs> like, that's what I think happened, and she right. was just her yeah. driver. Some shit like that. I mean, it might have been. I don't know. I only witnessed those few hours with them. Maybe he thought it was his girlfriend, and Maybe. she was like, this is this just a fool driving, driving me around. around. Might have very well done that. Because it doesn't sound, that's a weird but dynamic. But I think she kind of, I think she lived in that house, too. It's a weird dynamic, Yeah, it's though. super weird, because now, the whole time I'm there, this dude, Eddie's driving me around. But that first time was surreal. Who's Eddie? Eddie's the, Eddie's the baby daddy. Debo. Debo. Yeah, I didn't say his name, but nobody's know who the fuck this dude is. And he didn't do anything wrong. He's awesome. Yeah, he's cool so, in this situation. I'm just saying, like, Debo was like, yeah, don't worry. I'll drive you around. Yes. Look, kids, your yes. record deal. We, exactly. <laughs> so now <laughs> we go down to South Central. This oh, dude's got hey, You are so dedicated. Yeah, yeah. You're so fucking dedicated <laughs> to be going, no, no, I'll get in the car with this guy. Oh, he's banging your baby's mom? You just got out of prison? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, Fuck. it was so <laughs> sick though. He put my music on. He got weed out of the trunk. We're rolling around South Central, Stop. pumping my shit. Yeah. 
he was cool once he realized he liked me. That's cool. Yes. Never mind. This turned into a cool day then. It was cool. I'd never been in South Central before. I'm seeing all the streets from Boys in the Hood and South oh, Central and shit. Like I'm doing it, but we're, yeah, we're thumping my music and shit. You know, it was cool. So then he takes me up to the studio. I get to the studio. Who's the engineer? I don't know if I ever told you this. Fucking Nick Hogan. Why? Because <laughs> he's an engineer. Hulk Hogan's son? Yes. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I had no idea it was going to be him. So you walk up and go, what's up, Hulk Hogan's son? And it was only us. We had the whole ski lodge to ourselves. Because he was out of town. Yes. So for like extended. So I went in. We did this for like six, seven days straight. You just went to the studio and recorded and recorded and recorded music. Yes. The music you had you already had or the music they wanted you to make? Both. That first day, I went in there and smashed that shit they had given me the night before with a fucking passion. No paper. We went in there. I gave Nick Hogan the beat. He was like, oh, shit, because he's on that like club DJ shit. And then he loved it. We vibed out. We, we were good friends. He was cool as shit that whole time. We were on Ski's balcony fucking blowing down Dutch or Jays and shit in front of the ski lodge. We had the place to ourselves. We were fucking chilling. Yo, you and, had the best experience. and You cannot go back to Buffalo at that point. I did. <laughs> no, I'm saying you can't. You, I know. Mentally, you can't mentally, go back. Mentally, uh, that's back. the next part of the story. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was fucking amazing because, I mean, it was like you couldn't ask for a better experience. No, like you're you saying. can't. You, you can't. Debo just decided to go, damn, your music's tight. Uh -huh. Get that weed out the trunk. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Like, that's great. Oh, I have protection. Yeah, yeah. This guy's going to beat people up. They're trying to yeah. beat me up. Uh -huh. We can go to the gangland. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, it was kind of like that. That's exactly what happened. You yeah. Had the, you had a hall hood pass. Uh-huh. It was yeah. like, no, nah, don't worry, man. Bump it. Uh-huh. Yo, that's a great ex That's a great experience. It was so sick. And, you know, like, I, I, I think I even had to borrow some money, like, spending money to be out here. Like, I was just, and, and mind you, I'm just out here by myself, too. I don't have my kid. I don't have my daughter. I'm completely focused on music. For people, creatives like that, anytime where you, like, travel somewhere for the purpose of creating... And you're locked out and you don't have any other responsibilities, that's like a special moment. Especially in music. It's more hundred percent. It's most and most most people that are doing things that cause you to create. Yeah. Like if there's a block on your head when you're doing shit in your normal life. When you get out of your normal routine, it's like that's why I really fuck with the Rick Rubin, the way he does a lot of yes. stuff. Everyone's mm -hmm. just isolated. Yeah. Like, no, no, you're an artist. Mm -hmm. Put your phone down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like shut the fuck up and mm -hmm. work. I yeah. love it, dude. It's yeah. just it's like a think tank, mm -hmm. but you're yeah, by exactly. yourself. Yeah, but it was all for something because prior to that, I'd been a studio rat my whole life. I lived in the studio for years prior to that. Even as a little kid, I grew up in the studio. Yeah, because you did. Yeah, but now it was for something, and it was in Cali, and it wasn't us in a closet on the fucking Hulk Buffalo. Hogan's son just and like, Nick Hogan's on the right, board. The yeah. fuck? All right, let's smoke one. Yeah, yeah. So, and everybody's got weed. Everybody's got weed in their little jars and shit. I had never seen weed in prescription bottles. I would say prescription pop yeah, tops. Yeah. That's what everyone had their and weed And the first weed we got, that first night I got here, his girl ran in, got the weed, came out. She's like, it's Dr. Dre OG. I was like, oh shit. Because I was on a mission to meet, I was on a mission to get a Dr. Dre record deal. Yeah. Uh, so we were, we were talking about that. But anyway, yeah, I did 10 days and then I went the fuck back to Buffalo. So when you went back to Buffalo, <laughs> getting on that plane, until you landed, you still had that motivation. When you land, you go, oh, yeah, I got to get out of here. Well, it would have been real bad because I went back. So now I go back. It's late September. It's already getting cold. Yo, this is a movie in my <laughs> head. I know because you know what's crazy is I'm not looking at you over here. Yeah, it's weird. We're talking. It's like we're on FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, for people that don't know, sometimes we'll be setting up and we're three hours later we're starting to film because- uh -huh. We just talk for three hours about crazy, random stories. Like, wait, what happened? So yeah. I, that's why I know a lot of your stories. Yeah. But have we talked about them while filming? No. I don't know. Ever. I don't know. I have the luxury of popping in and out, funny one-liners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I leave. Now it's like, no, no, no. Hear the story. So, so far, this is like a fucking, gr this is like, I could see this being a movie. I love it. Yeah. So now you're was, going back after the sick-ass 10-day stay. In bomb California, yep. and I had just had all these epic falling outs with all my friends, so uh, it was a big like bitch. I'm not, told you I was going to do this fucking shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's sad too. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I'm not going to come out here and stand on Hollywood Boulevard with my fucking mixtapes. Nah, bitch. I did it the right way. It took yeah. uh, two months fucking longer. 
<laughs> two months <laughs> longer for real. <laughs> so you get back and now you're like, what? April, we're going to move. Yes. Well, okay. she came and visited her friend in Dana Point. And after it, which is like, guys, if you've ever visited SoCal, everybody. Where's Dana Point? S- it's Southern Orange County. It's like beautiful. Towards you? Yes. Be- wherever South you where live. I live. Yeah, wherever you live. Anybody that visits oh. LA n- needs to visit South Orange County. because Go past beautiful. Orange County. If you come to LA, LA's great. There's shops and you know dirty ass streets. It's dope. I love it out here. It's the city where you're at. Yeah, is when they show pictures of California, yes. beaches and yes. families and trees. That's where he lives, mm-hmm. and that's where April it's came to so visit bomb. on the beach. Oh, she fucking yeah. can't go back. So she's like, "Yeah, we'll do it for sure." And that was just a few months after. Because mind you, now I came back. And I'm gearing up to release California Campaign. The CD, those songs are on California Campaign. Produced by Nick Hogan? Engineered by Nick Hogan. I mean, there was a track on oh, there that random. was produced by uh, Nipsey's producer because he's in-house at Ski Music and all my producers. I have a whole fucking team of producers at that point. Um, so we premiered it on Game's website. Rap, the rapper okay. The Game. Yeah, I was in with them and we dropped it on his website. So I had that that I was working towards. But when I got back, they started acting funny at the ski lodge too. Like as all music related things do. Really? In the sense that he became a TV host. Like him yeah. and Mark Cuban started a TV network. He, they like, shortly after I left, they took the recording studios out of the ski lodge. Oh, so they were like, oh, well, we're kind of done with music because they had a licensing division of the ski lodge. It was called Build Destroy Music. That was the whole thing. That was the whole, it was this whole big thing. Oh, so thing. when you got back, it's like, well, we don't exist. They're kind of like, yeah, we're kind of doing TV with Mark Cuban now. So we're not really like paying attention to this anymore. Yeah. It was, the, but that was slow because it was, I mean, so it was a couple months before we still moved. We ended up moving out in like July. So how August. much longer after you came to California and visited and went back? How much longer after you? I came back away? in September. We moved in like July. Oh, nice. Yeah. You stayed up and, and then took off. So, yeah, I was working a collections job, which fucking killed my soul. Like, yeah. I was telling you. But I was making connections through it, like looking up people's numbers and shit. That's how we met fucking Brian Callis. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Yo, if you're dedicated and you really want something to work, you will be Marty. Yeah. Marty, don't skip over this shit. Like, I, you know, just like, I don't even know if Brian knows it. I didn't want to, like... Next time he comes, we'll episode. talk about it. Last episode, you had a story... Ready for Brian. And when we left, I went, did you even tell your story? Last week's episode, I, I didn't even forget to mm-hmm. let my joint. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I was just lost in the conversation. Yeah. Don't skip over that shit. Marty this used to work in, in collections. I'm saying you used to work in collections. Yes. And you were doing what? Watching Joe Rogan's podcast, watching The Fighter and the Kid, and was like, No, hey, Fighter and the Kid didn't exist yet. Okay. Tell the story. What happened? Why'd you call Brian Callen? What's the point? Well, my method with music, and this is all alleged and beyond seven years ago. (laughs) Alleged. This is all a hypothetical scenario, but I would, I'd fucking look up. I had a Rolodex of the whole music industries and like phone numbers and shit. I'd call, I'd call you to death. I'd call your grandmother to get you on the phone. I've talked to a lot of famous people's family trying to get them on the phone to pitch them my shit. No. (laughs) No, yeah. you were taking them from the coll- from the collections Rolodex. Yeah, because like we're talking about like skip tracing. You're like, how the fuck could you find out somebody's address? Like, it's a no brainer. You could find out everybody's phone numbers and the people they live with phone numbers. When like when you're trying to find somebody to pay a bill. Yeah, you know. So like a good, for instance, when I did that whole make your own luck campaign with Rob Deerdeck, I got his fucking aunt on the phone. And then I got Big Cat on the phone, his cousin that did Fantasy Factory. I'm like, bro, I just give him the rundown. <laughs> how'd you get my number? I'll say the first thing. How'd you get my fucking number? Was don't worry the about first it. Thing I got. Yeah, don't worry about it. He needs that. Listen, he favored it on Twitter. I need it. Like it was like that. <laughs> You're that guy. I was at that time. Ooh, that's dedication. <laughs> and if you don't come off like a weirdo, I might go, okay. Fuck yeah. yeah, I never came off like a weirdo. Yeah, I just, if you did come off like a weirdo, I'd be like, yo, it'd don't be very easy. fucking call me yeah, anymore, be, bro. Yeah, it'd be very easy to. i at you for yeah. calling me. But I made real connections like that. But if like you that. really tried, I'm yeah. like, this guy went out of his way to fucking find us. Yeah. I'm not doing psycho shit for the sake of doing psycho shit, but I'm trying to get you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> you admitted psycho shit. No, it's just aggressive. <laughs> 
It's, it's just what everybody else is. No, it's just aggressive. Now. As he admits it's psycho what the shit. What fuck are they going to do? I mean, not, it's just aggressive. Not sign me to their record deal. I'm already there. Yeah, like, I get you, but. That's how you, I got in touch with Kellen. Why did you want to get in touch with him? Because he had, was blowing. Rogan's podcast was early on. He was one of the first, one of Rogan's friends that got blown up by the podcast. He started his own podcast, The Brian Callen Show, which I was listening to in this time frame. And he had a fucking t-shirt contest going. And you're already doing graphics. Yes. I was hustling graphics the whole time from the very start of me doing music. You just randomly knew how to do, just started My cousin graphics? gave me a computer on my 19th birthday. It had Photoshop and I learned it. Really? Yeah. So that- and you left that out. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, I didn't know how, how you started happened. learning graphics. Yeah. He gave that completely changed my life. He gave me a computer on my 19th birthday. My cousin from Detroit, I was telling you about. Yeah. He drove in. He gave it to me. Me and Jamal were there. He brought a fucking rental Jaguar he had. He let us drive around the neighborhood and shit. He, it was one of the best days of my life. He gave me the computer, had Photoshop and Adobe Audition. That was like a defining moment what? in my life because I started recording myself in the basement on Adobe Audition and started doing photo graphics for myself as a rapper. But then I started doing it for so all you my were boys. doing everything. Yeah, we were recording in the basement. I was doing all our graphics. I was doing our music videos. Like, I had a whole label of little yeah, of my boys. Yeah, and you're fucking filming, and you're taking pictures, and you're doing All that, that shit, yeah. Yeah. So that's how, I mean, that's how really that all kind of like. So you had a t-shirt contest, and you entered. So he had a t-shirt contest, and I called him. And you it got was, his number. It was him on his voicemail. And you called him. And just said, hey, like. I just, you know, I got some t-shirt designs for you. I just, if I can send them to you, let me know. And then he texted me back and I sent him the designs and then we went back and forth, but nothing really ever happened. He never used them. Did you win He never contest? paid me for anything. I don't fucking know. No, I don't think so. I don't know. It wasn't even that big of a deal. We just kind of made a quick, brief connection. And I said, I'm going to move to California. And then when I moved to California, I was telling you today, we went and we were looking at cell phone printers. When I first moved here, I couldn't get a fucking job in Buffalo. Okay. I had all these I had skills. I was a super hard worker. I literally couldn't hold a job outside of collections, which I hated with an mm -hmm. extreme passion. Within four days of being here, I got a job doing yeah. graphics and printing. Fuck you know, yeah. where, doing, what city? It was right by where I live. Oh, okay. You know, printing the cell phone cases yeah. and shit. So, uh, um, where, where was I going with that? <laughs> <laughs> you moved here four days and you were like, Brian Callen, you made oh, a yeah, connection. Yeah. So I was, I was running the printers one day and I was listening to him on Rogan talk about that. They were going to start the fighter and the kid. And I just had this like real distinct moment of like inspiration, like hit that motherfucker up. So I right, I was running the printers. I remember I just put the shit down, started printing and I went into my email. Hey, Brian, I made it out to California. I heard you're starting a new podcast. Let me know if you guys can use any help. And then literally within a half hour later, I got an email from Brendan, like, you know, what are you talking about? So then they just hired me to do some t-shirt designs. So I did a couple t-shirt designs for him. And, and that's that, right where they started. But it was before episode one. Oh. So then on episode, episode one rolls around like the night before and he goes, hey, we need a graphic art for today's episode. It needs to be about the episode. It's going to go up first thing in the morning and we need it to be a cartoon. So now I have to listen to the episode, come up with a creative concept about the episode that makes sense into a graphic and make it into a cartoon, which I had never done before. And it's going to go out in front of all these raging fans first thing in the morning. And it's your first project. And tomorrow. And it's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how you started? Yeah. So then I really cut my teeth with Fighter and the Kid. And it was very similar to this in the sense what that- What the fuck does that mean, cut my teeth? Like how I've never heard that expression really? in my entire life. It's like being a newbie at something, like getting I really you know, cut my teeth. Fans out there, I think people know that one. I, I, they, I hope they do. <laughs> this fool's out here making shit up. <laughs> no, that's something. I didn't make that. Yeah, shit I really up. buttered my dick with that one. You know? <laughs> what the I'm fuck is that? My mean? dick with these fools. <laughs> <laughs> I would never butter my dick. Is that what you just said? I was making shit up, buddy. Actually, what I did is I saw that banana thing and it looked like a stick of butter. I went uh, oh, buttered uh, my dick. I was just trying to think of a word. Um, sorry, you started the graphics, got the graphics. They said, "Good job, you're hired." Yeah, and then. I wasn't even getting paid for that at that point. I had to kind of earn that. But the show started to blow up and we started to perform live. And that started, I mean, it was fucking amazing. Those first two years, it was amazing. The fans. When did the show start? 2014. Oh, it's relatively new. 
Not really. It's t- under 10 I mean, years. Yeah. Yeah. But they're an episode like fucking 700 or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I was there for the first live performance, but I wasn't, I was only dealing with the podcast. But then my business grew when Brendan became a, a live stand up act. So, because as business, you mean yourself. You're still graphics. doing this yourself, though. Yes. So, you're like, this is me. I do that. I do that too. I do that. And you yeah. just went and learn it if you have Getting to. my degree, paying th- four oh, times you were going more to school this in whole time. rent. Yes. Working a full time job. Cam was a newborn. Two babies now. Ariana's five. We are living in Irvine. It's expensive as fuck. I'm working a full time job. I got a family. And I'm April's doing- a realtor still. Yeah, she had a job at the time. She was doing real estate. But I'm working 24 hours a day now yeah. because once to build that show up, I was a huge part of, of, I was the tip of the spear of our whole social media. I did every graphic we ever made, all our t-shirt, everything. So and all the fire in the kid shit. Not to mention, I had to do an episode graphic every Monday about the episode. The oh, Same night turnaround. Oof. You got to listen to the episode, come up with a creative concept. If it's going to be a parody or a composite yeah, or whatever working, it's going to be, it's, there's no room for revisions. It's and you have sometimes to to I would have to sit there and listen to the episode three, four, five times, oh, to pick something out that man. made sense. It's a lot of work, dude. There's so much. It's a lot of work. That's why it was high pressure. Yes, say there's so much pressure on you, especially going. Nah, don't fire me. Don't fire me. Don't and fire me. Fans, don't roast this shit when we post it. Because that's You're, the other thing. Were you like, running their social media at the time? No. Oh, so you couldn't be like, hey, I'm erasing that. <laughs> no, but fucker. the fans did nothing but ever show love, though, at that point. So, but then as things grew, I circled. Once I really started to kind of help Brendan blow up in his stand-up career. In by terms book, of by booking, right? Yeah, in terms of the, like all the live promotional graphics, the targeted ad campaigns in each city, the website, the email blast, the, the merch, all that type of shit that goes into touring. Fool did a world tour in the first year of doing comedy off of live po- live podcasting, like I'm talking about us doing. Yeah, like Brian was talking about, he did five minutes to open the show, five minutes to open the show. Next thing you know, Fool's doing a fucking doing world tour. Stand up, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, but then Brian became like a client of mine as Brian Callen, and then you know now I'm managing all his live shows and his whole brand. But with Brian, I was probably the most hands on of all my clients. Like I fucking do handled everything for him. Uh, but then like same thing for Theo and then Rogan. So, you know, and then like Josh and Sickler. So, so you're literally just picking up all these mainstream, uh, co- comedians, social lives. Um, um, like so, every social media thing. Yeah. Their promotion for their life. Everything you're doing. Their, their live performances. Yeah. And each one of those things, four or five hours. You're working 27 Well, they're constantly day. throwing shit at me. So and in so you're their, working nonstop. Nonstop. Because in it, their mind, like, yeah, Marty can get it done. But yeah, no, exactly. No, no. <laughs> you, Rogan, and Theo They're just did the same thing that. at the same time. And but you all wanted to jack this hour? Oh. That's how it went for like five oh. years. And school and all this. And I was working a job and all this shit. So like, yeah. When did you, how long into Jurassic Graphics did you were you able to quit your day job? 2017. How long did you start Jurassic Graphics? 14? 17. No, when did you start? I mean, when did you start doing the. The uh, first time, I mean, I like I Brian, said. When Brian started paying you. What year was that? That was like 2015, 2016. So for two years, you were fucking working a regular job But still? I was <laughs> I was doing that shit for free before the whole time before that, though. Oh. I was doing it through Brendan. Like, yo, Brian needs a graphic for this. Brian needs a graphic for that. Brian needs a graphic for this. And then and you're I like, hey, doing hey, it. And then I had to take me. control of the situation and be like, we got to make sense of this because it's too fucking much. Yeah, your brain. You can't and even any do that time, much. Yeah, and like I posted today on Twitter. So there it is. You put in two motherfucking full years of free work day in, day out to get where you needed to be in position. See that? It's not fucking overnight. You're not going to gain a million followers in, in a month. You're not going to get no. paid what you want today. Mm-hmm. Fucking work. I worked yeah. for seven years for free, but I was also having a hell of fun. Yeah. You are just grinding away. It was fun to me. I love being a I part know, of great. I know, but just like, saying, like, yeah, all right, three hours, right, go. I don't have the pressure. Because there's no glory in that being that far behind the scenes. I might as well have been a million miles away. Like, I was completely remote and removed from the situation. Yeah. But I don't give a fuck. Like, all I wanted was to do is build my reputation, which I did. That's what you were doing. Yeah, when that's I what started, you were doing. like, naming off all those names, it wasn't because, like, oh, they're just giving them to me. Like, I made my connection with Theo became my client before he even started, before he ever even went on Fighter and the Kid. Oh, really? But, but then Theo really blew up through Fighter and the Kid and Rogan. So what were you doing for Theo? Just the graphics and everything's too? Started with t-shirt designs, and then it rolled into episode graphics, and then it rolled into the live tour management promotions, just like, that's just how that's it goes. That's such a trip, though, that you're, 
you're running. And this is just a few years after moving here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you needed to move, man. I was doing this while I was in school. Fuck, for graphics? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you didn't even that have time the, to sleep at that point. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, yeah, it took a toll. That's a lot. It was a lot. It was a real lot. Because, I mean, I wasn't making a lot of money. We were still, like, not having barely any money because our cost of living was super high now. So, yeah, that like I I always remember the really, really huge chasm, the really huge big milestone after moving here was being able to quit the day job and focus on Jurassic yes. Graphics full time. But even then, I was still working 24 hours a day. You have to be. You had an employee until this year. Yeah. Yeah. That helped out a lot. Oh, my God. But then Marty, the interesting thing is, like, we grew it to the point so much while I did have an employee that, like, I was able to scale back clients, which was the ultimate goal. And right now podcast. you literally shaved off 90% of your clients. Yeah. Just because we need so much time put because into Because I can now. And uh, yeah, because this is my primary focus. That From day one, that was the plan. That was the yeah. goal. Like I hope to God I can do that because I couldn't have sustained the way I was going just with my family. Brain would have broke. Yeah, it wasn't fun. It was no, it was no, yeah, cool. You work with all these cool people, but... The fuck does it mean? You, you can't don't do get, anything like, You don't get health insurance. You don't get weekends. You don't get time. Like, eventually, that shit runs thin. So, I just always, I've always known there's been levels. And, yeah. and you can still do graphics and shit when you hire a team. Like, exactly. By the way, I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. I'm hiring a team of me's. Yeah. I could totally do that. Yeah. That's just not my focus. Maybe in the not future. Right now. No, no, not right now. And yeah. I, right now, we're in the startup. This yeah. is... Exactly. This is episode thirty-one. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> this and is not. Deep. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not greedy enough to think, or maybe greedy is not the right word, but I know when something special, when it needs your attention, give it to it because special things only come around once in a great while. Yeah. Like, and if you're lucky enough to be a part of it once, I'm. I have the experience of being a part of something special like that, but I was just like a support player, so I know how how it can go, what can happen, what to do, how like. What can go wrong? You've seen this whole entire podcast thing Play already. Out. Yeah. Like, you know, and if you if you really look at everybody that's done podcasting, it's so new. That particular scenario is super unique. Nobody's done it like that. Nobody's come out of the gate. And you're so talking about firing strong. the kid. Yeah, yeah. In terms of just the live shows and just that first two years. Because it was when Rogan was really making the transition from just being like a hit big podcast, like the biggest show in the world. Yeah. They, you know, and the UFC too, like I, Conor McGregor, even McGregor was one of our first guests, you know, like when we were on Fox sports. Whoa, no shit. Yeah. So, you know, but, uh, yeah, so, but I don't work with them anymore and I don't work with, you know, a lot, a lot of people really. So this you is my dial, primary focus. You dial it back yeah. too. Cause I can, I remember saying times like Marty, if we don't get the Dobazola video channel, Dobazola channel video done, don't trip. Let's just do it tomorrow. Because I know you got nine other yeah. fools going, hey, Marty, can you get this done? But like, that's the other thing. Dobazola is also my other main, like, dope. once we started working together, and it was, like, really allowed me to realize, like, I'm really not a graphic designer either. I'm really, like, I really like video more. Mm -hmm. Graphic design kind of supports the video. Video is fun. And you were my first client where it was predominantly videos, video. yeah. But then we were able to circle it back and have it be like full brand management, basically, with like when we really put together the thought for dopeazola.com and how we needed it to function and get set up. It took a year. You know how long it took to build that fucking site? It took a long time. Um, but I mean, shit, now we're like, we're set up the right way and we're up and running and we have options. We can do these pay-per-view events we're talking about. We can, you So know. what Marty's talking about is before, we'll, we'll get right back on topic, sorry. Before we get off topic, Marty and I are thinking about doing a pay-per-view, like five bucks, watch this video. I know it's like, wait, so you're charging for content. It's more like this. What if we do it on our website? Because YouTube, we can't say everything we want to say. We can't show everything we want to show. Have you ever seen a pound of weed on the table during a podcast? No, because YouTube's going to get pissed. But if we do our own pay-per-view, mm. I can have 150 pounds of weed yeah. on this table and just swim in yeah. it. Things like that, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about, I don't want to give it all away, but what if we'd like a three-on-three -three tournament? Like, all right, all the guests come back, run all. Because it'd be kind so of funny sick. to see that. All right, cool. And then it's just, it It depends on what we want, but either way, we can be uncensored. And we're thinking, oh, okay, so we charge people five bucks. They can come watch the video. It's a good trade. It's yeah, a good trade-off. I like I love that. It. 
yeah. I like that. Because it's in line with, like, we're, um, we were saying, the comedians selling their stand-up specials off their own website for five bucks for, you know, an hour. But what if it was our... And and what if we could just do a podcast in a giant grow room? Yeah, shit and like that. do the that. show from my... Uh-huh. So today we're in 600 uh-huh. pounds a we week. We do the three-on-three <laughs> tournament, and then we, like, watch and react to it from the grow room. Shit like that. Two days later. Everybody's <laughs> yeah. still sore. Uh-huh. We're just watching and laughing and shit. That'd be While just trimming up weed. So <laughs> what do you do? So, uh, you know, I'm from fucking Buffalo, man. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know what... I don't, we don't know yet. We're just thinking of that idea. So Pretty drop cool. a comment. If you like that idea, if you like that concept, let us know. We're just... We're brainstorming out here, okay? We want to put out more podcast branded stuff that's not necessarily the podcast yes just different stuff maybe a different segment yeah get creative with it as things continue to grow because it's hard for me in my brain because it's like all right the adventures of yolo channel family friendly so much the dope is yolo channel say whatever the fuck you want podcast say whatever you want but hold back a little bit because we are also on youtube yes and it's like okay so where's the uncensored all of it mixed Mm-hmm. Okay, what do I do? Mm-hmm. How do I word this? What do I do to make it different? Yeah. Because I'm the same person. How do you make mm-hmm. the same person do four different styles of things? Mm-hmm. It's hard. Yeah, for sure. It's hard. And in my head, I'm like, so what am I going to do? Well, I just won't cuss. It sucks. I'm not cause changing you're myself ma- you're up. Like creating out of the wrong space when you're doing that. I feel yeah, like. I feel like I'm not trying to be myself, but it's like, no, I am. That's yeah. why it always comes back to the same thing. And I always start going, wow, fuck. Because that's just who I am. I'm not yeah. going to be able to change it, mm-hmm. but we're thinking about that. Like, how could we be uncensored? Because I'm pretty uncensored. Mm-hmm. But I know we, we can really, get more uncensored. When I watch the podcast back, though, it's like, I mean, it's pretty clean. Yeah, we don't go crazy. We don't go crazy. We, especially with the clips and the titles and the thumbnails. Yes. Like, we really G-rate it as much yes. as possible. Like, I, I, we talk about some shit on here, but I would like to say different things sometimes. And I go... Uh-huh. No, YouTube might just go, hey, unplug that channel. Yeah, it's so... We don't want him to say that again. This channel's so valuable to us now that it's no, just like... we'll just play it nice, yeah. motherfucker. And when we start doing live shows, get ready. Exactly. I'm going to throw dildos at the <laughs> fucking audience. I don't know. Just something <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, Quick uh, idea I have. Ready? You heard it here first. You ever seen Rocker, Rocky Horror Picture Show? Uh, Tim Curry, you know who Tim Curry is? Motion, it's not Rocky Horror Picture Show. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay, that's what it's called? Science Motion Theater. No, that's that's something different. Okay, all right. Rocky Horror Picture Show is, you know, Tim Curry is? Yeah, or no? Tim Curry from The guy that played It, yeah. yeah. He plays a transvestite, is what they called it. A sweet transvestite it was like, I don't know what his name was. Anyway, it's like a very sexual, weird, It was a. it's a good movie, but it's a, it's a musical. And my mom, I shout out to my mom. She told me when she was younger, during the show at the theater, they would have people go, like, say you go to AMC and Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's 1970-something, 1980, right? They go, hey, reach under your your seat at this time. And on the screen, it'll be like, beep, beep, beep. And the people that work at the theater act as characters and they run through the theater during certain parts of the show. So in the movie, when he mm. pulls up a newspaper, you pull up a newspaper and everyone pulls it out at the same time. And it's like the, it's like, so it's like you're, Oh, what the fuck? And they're like, okay, so pull this out at the same time. When you do, it's like, you should be smelling this smell. Like, Whoa. Because on the screen, yeah. like say the guy's peeling an orange and then you uh-huh. smell the whole theater, just orange mist. It's like, it's kind of like, what was it? What would you say? Yeah, like yeah. an immersive. Like immerse, thank you. Immersive. It's fucking cool. So I was thinking, what if we, one of these episodes at the end, go, hey, so next week, guys, do us a favor. If you can, have like some duct tape, this, a pair of scissors, an apple, this and that. <laughs> Just wait. And during the episode, while we're talking, say I plan the stories I'm going to talk okay. about and say I'm like, I was running and I fell through this and it smelled like this. I'm like, what if I can plan the stories I'm going to talk about uh-huh. and then pick a thing in between or a story from yours? Like next week, you're going to need these six items. And we put it up on the screen as I'm saying goodbye. Uh-huh. And then the next time we do it, we, during our video edit, we just put up, grab your apple in five, four, three, and then just as everybody's eating I'm like <laughs> so I was walking right and I was eating this apple pie and I was doing some shit I don't know I was I trying to think that. of like how uh, do I make the audience feel even more into the show uh, because I know the fourth shot when we were with 
Eric Con Goblin me, it felt like you guys were at the end of the table. Uh -huh, yeah. That's how I felt yeah, when yeah, I was watching it too. Sure. So what if we can be like, That's funny. all right, what's up guys? Grab your, ready, go. Uh -huh. So I was running through this orchard. I, yeah, I don't know. Right. I'm just trying to think of things that would involve a smell or a thing or a feeling or a look. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. I like that. My mom Some explained that to symbiosis me. Symbiosis with the fans? Yeah, I, I don't know. My mom told me, uh -huh. like, wait, what? So like, they had a newspaper and she's like, yeah. And then the guy dressed up like him would run right down the aisle and just scare the fuck out of people. Mm. Sounds... Odd, yeah, for sure. But cool. They do that at Disneyland, where they're like, Mishka. see, yeah, the mist with the uh, the uh, Shrek thing where they yeah. spray the smells. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like podcasting, so, exactly. Kind of. <laughs> but for podcasts, yeah. and you got to do it yourself. Yeah, except for like the episodes you're talking about your mom. All right, I'll punch yourself in the face. Yeah. So right, right now, what you're gonna want to do is you <laughs> you stab, you stab right by your kidneys, and then you slap yourself. Be real scared. Start sweating. Whoa. Be mad and scared. Be mad, scared, and sweat, and start to sweat. Hold your breath until you start sweating. Yo, no, we're not gonna do that. But a bag of stuff, or hey, next uh, week you're gonna need these items, if you want. Mm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of awesome. Uh -huh. Leave a comment. Do you like that idea too? So three on three to our pay per view tournament, uh -huh. Rocky Horror Picture Show style it, um, episode. Could be fun. Oh yeah, maybe for Halloween. Uh huh. Yeah, we got all we just dressed up as uh -huh. something like, all right, so you're gonna need this candy, this candy, and then <laughs> next week you're gonna need this, 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 and this. Um, bro, that's not a bad idea. I'm with all that. Type I of shit. like it. See, these are our FaceTime conversations. Uh -huh. We were in a whole movie of your life and then went, hey, you know me, sick, <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh -huh. now. Boom. It's 2017. You're starting to get paid. You're picking up. Now you're Joe Rogan's guy. You're Theo Vaughn, uh, Brian, Sickler, Josh Wolf, all these people. You're doing it for years. You're managing all their social media, managing all their stuff, ticket sales, concerts, this. You're funk. You, it's not like you did it because like, they're, they're hilarious. It doesn't work without them. Yeah. But I'm saying like for all the stuff that people don't want to do, you're the guy knocking all of it out. Mm-hmm. And and mm -hmm. selling out the arenas like mm -hmm. target marketing, target market. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, every all the city are gone. they go to, there's a whole ad campaign associated with it. And that's it. the shit behind the scenes that you never think about. And I'm about. dealing with Live Nation and with WME and CAA and all their agents and all the the venues. And so you're acting as manager. Shit. I play a lot of that managerial role for a lot of them. I have in the past, big time. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. You gave me a lot of really good experience. Yeah, for sure. To do it for us. Yeah. I mean, we us. see this shit in action all the fucking time. <laughs> Guys, I got to be honest. When me and Marty started, we're like, yo, if we could just do this a month, we'll be happy. And we're, all right, well, we just do. And now it's like, well, it's working. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Holy it's shit. Actual business now. It's crazy. It's fun to be like, oh, we got paid to come in today. Jesus we were just Christ. hoping. Before we were just hoping. And not only did it have to work, it had to work fast. Too. And it did. And it did. And it did. So fucking thank you guys God. so you much. Guys. I promise you'll never see a scandal. You'll never see us doing some dumb we'll shit. Never do you wrong. We'll never do some <laughs> wild things. I promise. We're never gonna. Marty O'Neill beat the fuck out of April. Like you're not gonna find that. All right. You won't do nothing. As long as you minds your peas and peas. <laughs> <laughs> She just smacked you yeah, in the arm yeah, right yeah. now while you guys watch this. Play. <laughs> while you're watching this back, she's slapping you yeah, in the arm, uh -huh. and I feel like you should record My her right when laughing. this is popping up, uh -huh. just to get that. Inception uh -huh. thing going on. Uh -huh. Wear the shirt. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm fucking high. So now we're catching up to you're done with music. You're doing all of this podcasting behind the scenes. So people that like podcasts and watch that, you were there for all of that shit. Yep. And I started like being involved with like when Rogan released his last Netflix special. Cool. You know, Rogan, I started getting involved with like Netflix. I started doing the, the cover art for the specials, the trailers for the specials, being involved with the production companies of the specials, you know, just kind of like kind of moving up levels and levels, you know, within that. And then I put out the book full time podcaster, me and my boy, Nick, who's Theo's producer. We put out full time podcaster. Nick, Nick is uh, super cool. Yeah. Nick's cool. Super fuck. cool. Um, Nick just linked, possibly linked us with Adam Carolla to get him to come on the show yesterday because be Nick used to work for Adam. Tight. Yeah. That's what, that's how I, that's how I work, ended up working for Adam Carolla. Through Nick. Through Nick. Yeah. Um, so then we, yeah, we put out the book and the book was a big thing because it's like, you know, you get really horrible where, margins. Where can everybody find that? Uh, Audible, Amazon, Apple. It's called Full-Time full -time Podcaster. Podcast. 
Um, if you go to fulltimepodcaster.com with hyphens in between the words, that you know has what's the craziest the thing. Not ready. Full time podcaster is your full time job. Mm-hmm. Now it is. So is graphics. Mm-hmm. So is editing all of our other videos. Mm-hmm. It's two you different have, businesses. I yeah. know you're full time podcaster in this twelve hours area. <laughs> yeah. In this twelve hour area, we're editing all these crazy videos and yeah. doing crazy shit. <laughs> So it's not like we're trying to do all this stuff while having four lives on top mm-hmm. of it. And remember, yeah. you have three kids and you're married. Mm-hmm. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, by the way, they're growing up. Oh, fuck you guys <laughs> over there. No, fuck that. Every time I fucking call you, someone's hanging yeah. off your body yeah. and, they, and choking you and shit. Yeah. So it's like a lot of the podcasting people are like, yeah, you guys are crushing it. You guys are doing it. But I can't wait until we can fucking focus on this full mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Be a full time podcaster. Yeah. And it can, do- it will it will ev- eventually. Point, for sure. We just spread ourselves. We're so doing thin. it organically and we're taking the stairs. Like, yeah. We're doing the long route. Yeah. We could have. And not know. dissing anyone at all. I'm yeah, just no, saying everybody's like. Everybody's got their own path. doing their own shit. We already started on the fucking long route. So we're not going to go yeah. and switch up now. Yeah. You work just as long as I do. Except you get up early and sleep at night, and I'd stay up all night and get up at 11. Yeah. It's on different shifts. <laughs> it's just different shifts. It truly is. What time are you asleep? Oh, I went to bed five hours ago, four hours ago. Oh, fuck. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, But, but yeah, so I put out the book, and I didn't make any money off the book, but it really no? made a big statement. And I knew that was going to happen. It just stamped me and Nick at the top of this industry. In terms of the behind the scenes people, because when you put out something educational on a subject, you become an authority in that subject. People okay. respect your also, you're knowledge not, about you're it. You're not doing this. Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Exactly. This. I'll I give hate you, motherfuckers yeah. like that, man. Mm-hmm. I can't stand people like, oh, you're doing great. Oh, you're doing really good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not gonna that is you, big in probably the artistic style community. I mean, I was just talking about the other day. Mm-hmm. It's big everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dicks. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm not like that at all because I mean, shit, I know I can do I'm better. not worried about that. Nobody's going to yeah, you take my yeah. job. Motherfucker. At this point, I'm not worried about that. Uh, so I would rather just kind of claim myself at the top of this industry, a la the hip hop industry in the nineties. And like we always talk about the record execs and the shit that ran that just, you know, I know, I know that me and Nick are that to podcasting. So that's why yeah, you guys run, you guys make things function and not saying nobody else can. Just saying, when you guys are the ones yeah, been doing it with yeah. these successful shows and have the track record record to show because podcasting's new. It's truly it's newer than the fucking internet. Yeah, the internet's like thirty years old. Yeah, podcast well, is like what fifteen. Yeah, for I mean for real for real. Like, yeah, yeah. Corolla is really the first one. Yeah, you were saying you were telling me that Corolla, Rogan, that whole cloth, but Mark Marin and them. But we put that out, and then I, right before that, I could tell. Even though I had gotten to the point where I'd stacked up all these clients and I was working a lot, but I was also like able to not have to work a full-time job anymore, I could tell it still wasn't going to be enough. Mm-hmm. And I really started looking up to Peter McKinnon from YouTube we yeah, always talk about. We always reference his ass. And I really, really always looked up to the photographer. There was just something about the photographer. He could show up and be there on site. He shows, he has a special, he has a tool. It was like my dad with a guitar. He could show up and play his guitar fucking anywhere in the world. He doesn't even think about it. He just does it. And I knew that the next step I had to take was to learn the camera. I knew how to edit. I had no idea how the camera worked whatsoever. Zero percent. What year is this? Uh, this is then. 2019? 17, 18, I think. Oh, okay. We met in January 2020. That's when we met. We barely, we barely met. Yeah. Feels like it's been like 10 fucking years. Yeah, yeah, years, it really man. does. So we're talking like probably 2018, 2019. And I just completely dedicated myself to studying videography and photography. See, that's what happens when you're like, no, I have to take, I have to be really good at it. You do what you did. You know what I mean? You did like, no, I'm going to take the time and I'm going to study it for a year. But and then a half. the thing beyond that is that you have to invest a bunch of money into it. Yeah. That's one of the and few I still things didn't have you have to. Money. So I got a credit card and spent 10000 on it my first on go. All your stuff? Without testing or using any equipment ever, just based off my research, my psychotic research. Yeah, you do a lot of that. You so, do a lot. And luckily, I made good choices. I'm really happy with the choices I made in terms of what I bought in my first purchase. 
And now we're getting close. After I get into this goddamn house for a while and settle down, we're talking about like and making that second round of investments into new camera equipment. Because the stuff I got is good, but it could there's a whole another level above it. Yeah. But that's a, I want to make a video about that because that's a problem every photographer and videographer that's new faces. There's all this information out there. There's so many different pieces of equipment. They're all so expensive. What am I actually going to need? Yeah. Because unless you know somebody, you can't go test this shit out. And Canon versus Soji versus Nikon versus... You have to go rent all that shit, too, if you want to do if that. If you want to test it out. Yeah. Most people don't do that. They just fucking Most people it. aren't in L.A. where there's 30 places to rent shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're lucky. We always think, like, well, you don't have something? Like, you're in L.A., motherfucker. So It's the mecca of stuff. I got my shit. My first gig ever was Theo Vaughn, Live at the World Turn, Dry Room for Netflix. Filming. Yes. BTS. Oh, shit. My first photo shoot ever was Theo Vaughn, the Rat King. When he won the uh, title of Guest of, of the Year on Fighter and the Kid, yeah. So my first, That's I so was crazy. already. You literally have been there every step of the way, day in, day out, every episode, every graphic, every post, every episode. I have every episode in chronological order in their file. Every file. I have every file ever still organized. Oh. For every live show, every apparel drop, every promo drop, every I have everything I've ever done <laughs> completely organized. Wow. Yeah, no, it's cool so though, much. but to being able to go back, like, well, that was my first God here. Yes. Here's with this and this chapter, and then now mm -hmm. we're on a new Developed chapter. Developed into my own style. You know, we did a lot of parody stuff. Parody shit is not easy to do. It's super fucking hard. Really? Yeah, because you're so limited in what you can do. If I'm parodying a movie poster, I got to find the person that I'm putting on the poster like in the exact same position as the person, uh, exact same the lighting and the positioning yep. and what makes sense and and okay, there's text and there's logos on this goddamn poster. I got to remove them so I can put my own text and logos on it. Each one takes like an hour. Oh god, I mean, depending it can take all fucking night. I've pulled so many all nighters doing this shit. But then I really developed my own style too. Yeah. I, I, I found those in love years with, of that though. Is yeah, where is why you where you're at? But it was such a natural thing because I was already doing mixtape covers and party flyers, so it was like how the crazy same that thing. you're literally trying to get a record and you go no 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 no, there's money in this because I got with I got with Dr. Dre's son Curtis. He became like fucking best friend when I first moved here. I realized that Snoop Dogg had some sort of studio right by where I lived. As soon as I realized that. I booked a session down there. Got down there. I mean, it wasn't Snoop Dogg's studio. It was like some off-brand fucking shit where he was probably one time. But it was nice, but it was sketchy as fuck in terms of just the dude that ran it. And, uh, <laughs> like, I told him I wanted to book a session. I went in and met with him. And there were some big L.A. rappers in there when I went in. And the dude big-timed me the whole time. I sat in his fucking studio for probably seven, eight hours listening to whatever they were doing, the dudes in his office that I'm supposed to meet with. I just sat there the whole fucking day. And at the end of the day, he like called me into his office and shit. I'm getting to know the engineer. I'm making, I'm getting to know the people in there. We're hanging out. It's not like I'm just, you know, but then he like, he hits me with some, what's your budget type of shit, all this shit, whatever. I already knew Dre Son Curtis was like affiliated with that studio because I saw a magazine cover. So, and I had been on a mission to get a, a record deal with Dr. Dre the whole time. So then, like, I booked a session. I had to borrow money to do it because booking sessions cost thousands. And then I went in, did my first session, and he's like, all right, I'm going to have Curtis come into your next session. I didn't even ask him. I and think Curtis he told me. Jason. Yeah. So then I booked a second session, and I come back in. We're recording, and then Curtis walks in. He looks just like Dre, just like him. Whoa. It was creepy, and I'm recording, and I, I see him, I just keep going, and then eventually he pulls me out, and we sit there, and the three of us talk, and then, like, me and Curtis started our own relationship. I started recording, like, at his house in his closet, which was crazy, because he had pictures of Tupac and Snoop and uh, Dre and shit. All your shit. idols. <laughs> it was really surreal doing that, that whole run when we were doing that together. But that was also the same time when the shit with Brendan and Brian Fighter and the Kid all started. And I realized, like, even though this isn't what I had originally set out for, this is actual opportunity. I've never made a dollar off music. Put my all into it. I'm just going to put it on hold right now because Drastic Graphics is what's going to keep us, is what I need. I could tell in my heart, like, this is what I need to do. Yeah. 
So even though I had like basically reached where I was really, I mean, on some levels, like really fucking close to where I was trying to be in music, I abruptly stopped it abruptly. Like I was just listening to the last track I did in fucking Curtis's closet yesterday. Uh, went full fledged into drastic graphics mode once I had the opportunity with Fighter and the Kid. Yeah, they fucked up not having you tell your story on their show when you first started. <laughs> what a story, dude. It truly is crazy yeah. as fuck because when you go 2014 and up, whoa, you've been doing all this shit? Like, yeah, what about before? Like, wait, what the fuck did you just say? You mm-hmm. used to do what? Yeah. This is you rapping? Because remember you sent me, I'm like, I really hope Marty's music isn't dog shit. Because when he told me, I'm like, yeah, send it to me. It's like after knowing you for so long, I'm like, wait, no, this is Marty. Because I could hear like, oh, this has been on the radio. 2001, radio. I totally hear it. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, when you're like, oh, please don't be dog shit. Bro. Yeah, of course. I don't want I don't want to look at you like, it was cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. It was all right. <laughs> but I was like, oh, no, I can hear it. And I can hear that it's you. I'm like, no fucking uh-huh. way. To, for you to just stop that, just to do drastic graphics, is it such a so life change. It was so much. Even like, it it's was like an weird. athlete's like, I'm done playing sports. Right when he's about to fucking like. Eh, I got signed. I don't want to <laughs> like, play no more. I was so sick of it. In a lot of ways, too. I fucking, there's so much. You are literally the blueprint for so many people out there that watches that do music. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, if I could, if I did that, oh my God, I'd come up like that. And then yeah. you had it went. It was a constant. It was this web I had been weaving for years. If I do this, then I can get this. If I do this, then I can get, it. you have to go through people's relationships and just like, it's this whole, and then, but I mean, I'm putting out mixtapes. Also, out you're albums. white. I'm going to say this is one of the only times you're like, might not help you in this in this situation. No, it was not an advantage whatsoever at, at that time whatsoever. This Especially is before at, Mac Miller, before this Machine is, Gun Kelly. Yeah, all that this shit. is this is Eminem's the biggest one. If you're not Eminem, then you're probably not going to make it because you're looked at as like, oh, so what's up, Eminem? What's up, Slim Shady? There was I, a lot. I guess of that. they called you that every fucking day yeah, of your life. I mean, anyone called you that? Oh, you rap, you are white, you watch a mile before? They probably thought that. I know. I, I am just saying. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It must have been harder to at that time period of that. Not just of that. The, yeah. Yeah, because that music that was coming out was mm-hmm. like yeah. 50 Cent G unit shit. But that was you know my thing. It was almost an advantage, though, because Eminem was on some shock value shit. For when sure. When people heard me, they didn't know it was me. Like, even when I was, I, I earned, I mean, this sounds douchey to say, I earned the respect of the fucking streets in where I'm from, no doubt about well, it. Well, you're there also. Like, you live there from there. Even, That's where but furthermore, you're but even I moved around so much. I'm not from anyone. So when got I, you, when I you, like, like in Lackawanna, I moved there as a fucking 16 year old and got deep respect to the, sh- I knew it. Like at one point I remember I'm with my boy and I was driving, he was in the passenger seat. This old man, we're at the gas station and he starts talking to my boy in the seat who's huge, probably couldn't even see me driving. He's like, I heard about your boy, white boy. He's tough as nails. Nice. And I was like, they know. Screwdriver. Motherfuckers know. <laughs> yeah. Got that screw in my hand. Old There's man. little moments like that where I was like, I knew there were so many little yeah. moments of like, it felt really good. Good. Don't try to beat me up. <laughs> those were my only wins in music. Those little moral victories. The old like, man, I like, heard that white boy's <laughs> tough as nails. <laughs> <laughs> and he smacked the shit out of you. <laughs> Yo, I love it. I just remember this one time. I was like, yeah. Bunch of little moral victories on the way, but, you know, that was about it. But Bunch I'm saying of like all that, money it, in, no money out. It couldn't out. have helped, though. It couldn't have helped. I mean, like, look at this kid. Nah. That's how yeah. I they, I mean, mm-hmm. when it comes to the, like, the hip-hop shit. Yeah, for sure. I think it'd be like, nah, fool. But now I, it's, I think it's it's different now. Difference, like, yo, the stuff geekiest motherfucker might be the hardest rapper ever i also wasn't aware of it i was uh, benny i was listening to benny's new album he has a, a line on it where he says when i was broke my confidence was on a million and then he says a million that's how i was like my confidence was so high it never even crossed my mind I was, it wouldn't have never dawned on me, like, this motherfucker might be thinking I'm fucking something. Oh, no, I would <laughs> never think about yeah. it. I don't care or what even you like, think, Even you saying it now, like, I, that really I'm saying never, it wouldn't have helped. No, for sure. I'm saying it's not like it you had at the one time in life where, like, I'm 6'2", blue-eyed, yeah. white man, able-bodied, I'm smart. That's not my advantage. <laughs> Nothing is helping me. In any other situation uh-huh. in life, you're the manager. 
You are the manager. <laughs> okay. I'll, Do you see what right, I'm saying? I see where you're going with like, this. Like, yo, you never had no no formal education? <laughs> you're the manager now. Uh-huh. You're fine. Uh-huh. So that's all I meant. That's hilarious. That's fucking awesome. That's really fucking funny. Dude, um, <laughs> where the hell were we at? Uh, we were at, we were at, you just stopped doing music. Mm-hmm. You're yeah, completely yeah. stopped to shit. Yeah. As you're with uh, Curtis. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get the deal with Dr. Dre. You're like, you know what? I'm fucking done with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the man, I just dedicated myself to the fucking podcast. How weird is that? Yeah. Did it's really weird. Cause it's like, like back, like, it was, nah. I, I want to rap about that. I'm going to freestyle. Right. <laughs> you ever like, do you ever sit there and go music? Mm-hmm. You never think I have, that? it's, I still have the same, it's still the same to me. I don't miss it because it's all the same like muscle to me. No matter what kind of like creative project I'm going into, if I'm writing a song, if I'm making a video, if I'm making a po- cover art, if I'm like, I get the same juice from it. Got you. So it's not like you miss it. I don't miss. I've never missed going and recording, really. I mean, because it's not me anymore. I get that. You don't miss. I've making never a song. I thought I, you would think I would, but I really haven't. I, I don't really? like sit. I don't write songs. I don't. It's just a different chapter of my life. Like. Wow. It's like that's like a little time capsule of my life. Mind you, I could go back and do it tomorrow if I wanted to. It's just something I could I know I could. Like I listen to Griselda you. like that I could be doing that right now if I wanted to, but it's just not. I just I, I'm a I'm beyond I'm not beyond that, but it's just You're, not you where referencing I'm at in my Griselda life. because Buffalo, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like yeah, these motherfuckers are killing me for yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I could be doing, I could, that could be my path, but in my gut, I knew like, this is, this feels right to me. That's what I want to be doing. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like, yeah. you know, you ever talk to boxers, like, you don't miss it. Like, yeah, I almost punch somebody every day. Man. <laughs> it almost was like, every day. When we talked about when I stopped playing basketball, it was real abrupt. I got, yeah. I crashed and burned and then I was pe- dead, like obsessed with music. I never thought about basketball again. I was obsessed with basketball my whole life up until that point. Crashed, burned, switched obsessions. Okay. I 100% understand what you're saying. Because I, all I do is play sports when I was a kid. And as soon as I stopped, I didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. But I do sometimes. Because it's fun. But I, I totally understand what I you're saying. I didn't like now. the feeling of being out here and like still being half of the dude I was in Buffalo. I didn't like it. I was going like, I didn't want to be him anymore. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a young, successful like entrepreneur like all these other people in Irvine. that like Especially when we moved into the park. Which is like luxury, brand new apartments. We got a deal because they worked for the company when we first moved here. It looks it's straight up luxury, and I felt like straight white trash when we moved in. I was self conscious, like I didn't want to be who I was. I wanted to, I wanted to be it. more. I want. I was. I didn't. Not saying like that's childish or anything. You just don't want to be that guy anymore. Past chapter of my life. It was like a rebirth moving here. Just a different life. I didn't want. That's fine. Yeah. The, like. All it's like I was someone coming out of about, jail going, I'm going to do good. Yeah, my music was about struggle. I wasn't, I mean, my music was about making it out. That was, if you look back at my music, that's what it was all about. The first couple of years were on some like street shit. But then when you look beyond that to when I was really going in making real music, like it was all about making it out basically, like what my goals were and shit. California campaign. It was the only way that I could see that I could get out, uh, yeah. out and ma- like make something cool happen in life. First, it was like, all right, I got to go to the NBA. I was like, all right, I need a million dollar record deal. Like, I've always, I've always liked those. You go like, hard million, in every fucking one way. in a million pops. Yeah. Well, I know. The other day, you go, we need a million dollar sponsorship. Yeah. You said that to me like three days ago. I say it very we need that casually. million dollar sponsorship, we're having, man. Yeah, we're having conversations. I'm like, yeah, yeah, these are all cool, but let's not fucking forget. Like, let's start thinking about some goddamn million dollar deals. And I say that because, I that's mean, people a, have done it. Yeah, that's not a bad way to think, man. If anybody's done it, we can do it. I've yeah. s- seen it be done, you know, by people before, meaning it can be done. And the thing I like about it is I ne- like as soon as this camera's off and shit, it's not like anything changed. It's more like, yo, if I gave you a million dollars more, what do you do with it? I'm going to go pay this off. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, this, this. Like, Cool. Me too. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. You'd never even fucking know. <laughs> what? You'd never even know you got a million dollars. I know what you're saying. You might know I got a million dollars because I'm like, yo, this car I wanted for my whole life, I mm-hmm. got it. Like, how? I got a million dollars, you bitch. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to go like, yeah, because a million dollars is really not a lot of money. It's not. At all. But I'm saying at once, 
here's a million dollar deal. Like, mm-hmm. wow, thank you. That's breathing room. <sighs> Especially when you're like so broke when you were trying when you were trying to do stuff so broke. It's like, holy shit. Yeah. That's why I always feel like if I'm watching our show, I always forget it's us. I'm always just watching a show. Mm-hmm. When I'm watching my homies' music videos, I'm not looking at my homie. I'm looking at like, all right, who's this artist? Yeah, subjectively. Every time, because I want to, I want to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like, I fucking like when Ratchet Man showed me his shit. I didn't like. So this is Omar shit. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I was like, could this be on the radio, Spanish radio, all fucking yeah. day? Would I see this on MTV, mm-hmm. Latin, or whatever the fuck and it is? Him specifically, yes. for sure. <laughs> Him, and I go, okay, so he's like a rocker dude. Uh, he sounds like that. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. I love the contrast. Yeah. He'll he'll be popping. Mm-hmm. I like looking at people like that. So when I watch our shit, I'm not looking at, oh, I didn't like the way I move. Oh, I don't like the notes. Like, I think I said something funny right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, that, mm-hmm. oh, that dude with that. And that was hilarious. Uh-huh. I think of it as if I'm watching it as some dude in Missouri, mm-hmm. some dude in Kansas. Would I watch this show if I was just sitting there smoking with me and my friends? Yeah, I'd watch it. Mm-hmm. That's the, how I yeah. hope it comes mm-hmm. across. Because I get a lot For of people, sure. my dad watches the show now. I showed it to my mom. My mom's been watching the show. Yep. Like, we watch it with our daughter. Our daughter watches almost every episode. That's of this crazy. Now, which is, That's I did not crazy. expect that to happen. Because you literally told me, I don't know if I show her Pulp Fiction. Yeah, that wasn't You that told me that ago. four months ago. Yeah. <laughs> All bets are out the fucking window. Sorry for saying fuck so much now. <laughs> But it's cool. I mean, when I think back to when I was 12, I mean, I was listening to fucking Tupac deep. Yeah. You know, which so is it's fine, like, but which it's is, just different. I'm, you're it's fine. Just different. It's just as a dad. You and you know, like, you edited it when you should go, hey, earmuffs, don't listen to this part. <laughs> Yo, hey, maybe you should just go get some water real quick and come back when I tell you. Yeah, it's been a couple times. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. go that way. Uh-huh. So we have been talking for almost two hours, right? Uh-huh. We got we did a chronological thing right now. I should have rolled way more weed. We got a chronological thing going on right now, right? Hold on, hold on. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I do. What? I got something here for you. One of them. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, it's almost your birthday. Oh, <laughs> you scared me. I thought you were gonna pull out some something. No, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna overlay this on the uh, screen. But somebody sent me a birthday video for you. A birthday video. Uh huh. Your Emery? Thomas, a.k.a. Dope, <laughs> as Yola. Well, so I'm not the only one around here with a nickname, huh? I like yours. I don't understand it, but I like it. <laughs> Your birthday. Martin O'Neill has been talking to me, and he said it's my best friend, Thomas A.K.A. Dope as Yola's birthday. <laughs> Shit, that's crazy. Right? You're a <laughs> diehard Seinfeld fan. Get Thank the fuck out of here! Big YouTuber and podcaster. Well, very good, very good indeed. I think that makes you a little soup worthy. <laughs> you should have some soup on your birthday. So, the ordering procedure. Uh, know your crazy, soup. Right? Have your money ready. Speak your soup in a loud, clear voice order and step six feet. To the left, and there this you motherfucker go. is with the so times. Order you, unless of course, Dopeaziola, you're pushing your luck, little man. In which case, as you know, it would be bread, three dollars. No soup for you. Come back one year next. Yo, this man's on point. I don't think point. you want that. You don't want the YouTube or podcast that kind of an outcome. Want to let everyone know you got your soup. So get your soup. Have a happy birthday and adios, muchachos. Yo, <laughs> no way. That shit is crazy, right? <laughs> the second I came, I said, "That the fucking soup nonsense." What are you? Sh- <gasps> it's this cameo. No, you're the man. Uh, so funny, right? Oh my god, my homie used to live next door to him. I oh, got so sad. I was like, you bet the Snoop Nazi motherfucker. <laughs> yo, holy shit. I did not expect that. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yo, what is he going to show I me? I almost fucking forgot. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the sick Bills hoodie. I'll flash it up on the screen. Bro, what? It's borderline. Our, this episode's right in between both our birthdays. And, and Freeway Rick Ross pushed us back, so it was kind of nice. 
<laughs> that was fucking awesome. <laughs> This episode's coming out on my birthday. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Hey! <laughs> Yo, Soup Nazi? Right. That was so fucking epic. Please send me that after we're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can... I, where was I going? I I was saying something. It sounded like you had uh, some path you wanted to go down that I didn't know about or some shit. Sorry, I interrupted you. What happened? <laughs> Sorry, we were talking about everything... And then you that that threw me the fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, "Man, I wish I would have smoked Yeah, no. Weed. So we basically just got through. Uh, we basically just got through. Like, where you at? Getting all the educating up here. myself through the camera, buying all my equipment. I bought all my ten thousand dollars worth of equipment. I did two shoots. Hold on, hold uh -huh. on. Soup Nazi. Oh, yeah. All right, they were just for everybody out there. Sorry, I'm still, I'm still processing. I can't wait to send it to Rosie. <laughs> Got to put him on the soundboard now, right? Oh, uh. fuck. Okay. <laughs> you got all your stuff. You did your shoots with Theo, did everything. We started, you started liking video more. We met me. That's 2020. Well, yeah, so I go, to, I go back to Buffalo for the first time. When? When I knew you. No. So I went back to Buffalo in late 2018. And you left in 14? 13. 13. Yeah, 13. July 2013. Wow. And you know what was really trippy? We got a, a three-month Airbnb with my boy from Buffalo that I did music with, Mikey. When we got to the house across the street from the Airbnb house, this big-ass house in Tustin, was this little basketball court that belonged to one of the neighbors, but it was a little dirt private road and they said we could play on it. Etched in the concrete of this basketball court, it said Martin and Michael, both of our names. Whoa. Fucking trippy. Whoa. But then that was it. <laughs> oh, that was the that, whole story? No, that was like nothing else on the concrete. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, he, he headed back to Buffalo like right away. Um, you guys got an Airbnb here. I know you guys have seen the story before, but Marty was yeah, with yeah. the guy Curtis, Dr. Dre's son. They happened to come to a party. We needed a camera guy. Marty said, I'll do the camera guy. And he was filming that was fucking me. Right after that time frame. I'd only been here about a year. So then. Wild. Now, okay, so I go back to Buffalo for the first time. I see my family I was telling you about. I reconnected with my mom's side of the family. I had a family reunion for the first time ever, which was a huge. And you met them? Like, yeah, re met a lot of my family which was like a really big moment. I was at Delaware Park, which, you know, like we were talking about RIP, man. That's fucking, there's a horrible news. We were talking about Delaware Park in Buffalo last episode. Horrible, tragic news story happened at Delaware Park since then, like two nights ago. Anyway, I was just looking at the pictures. We were there. But then while we were there, like I listened to whatever Dope is Yola video was that you said you wanted to do the podcast and I reconnected while I was in Buffalo. Oh, so, really? Yeah, because- I remember when you gave me the DM and I was, and I'm like, let me see what this guy's got to say. For some reason, I'm like, let me see what this guy's got to and say. And like, April didn't know what the fuck you were. I was like, trust me, this could be something big. I just made a big connection. As soon as we get back, I'm going to go meet with him. Yeah. As soon as we came, I was there for like fucking three weeks. It was so oh, was that trip. I remember oh my that God. trip. So this, hold on. this is the first day you've been back. Mm -hmm. Did you see anybody that we've talked about? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw a couple of my boys. Mm -hmm. And what were they doing? Same shit? Yeah, well, like two of my boys that I'm talking about are real, are like real active in music still. My boy Weedy, my boy Edot, they still they're on it. Like they really still do it. Good shit. So it's like, yeah, they are still they're still doing music. Um, so yeah, I mean, I connected with them, and then like they had like, did they trip out when you're not doing music no more? No, surprisingly, oh. no. Nobody fucking nobody has said anything. Nobody. It was like very natural. I mean. Just because I'm away. just I had I was drastic graphics the whole time, too. Huh. They weren't they were going alongside each other, supporting each other the whole time. So it was like, I'm just, you know, I'll get back to it if it presents me opportunity. But until then, I'm just going with I can't yeah. keep just dumping money into music. That's selfish. And I, I'm not, I don't see myself going out into L.A. and performing. I never even like performing. I like I like recording. I like going and making albums and putting together albums. Yeah, that was my thing. And all the behind the scenes shit that I do for this, I really like do, making all those connections, making shit happen. Like, that's what I really like doing. Yeah. You know, but so uh, 
then I came back and then I met you. I, we came up and met with you. I was like, damn, I felt like I knew this dude for a fucking long time. We just sat and talked and uh, like right away, I had already been knowing who you were and shit. I'd been watching yeah. your video. I'd been following you since I had originally met you. So I already knew what I was getting into. And I didn't even know I met you. Yeah. I and, didn't know you were, in, you were in my video until my mom episode. Yeah. So it was like, didn't even know all that preparation. I thought I was going to be following these fools around on the road, having to travel, learning how to do all this shit. But it was like all that preparation was for, we just like took the dope as Yola channel up the whole year yeah, right away. Like with the story times, with the vlogs, with everything. And then started planning this. We were planning this month one. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, I knew I needed, I wanted to hit you back up. Because you said, oh, I've been following you for a long time. But when I saw that you wanted to do a podcast, I knew to hit you up. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, good. Because most people are like, let's work. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. I can't stand when people say, let's work. I'm like, what do you do, motherfucker? Mm -hmm. I do multiple things. Be specific. That just means you're mass DMing yeah. motherfuckers. Let's work. Don't <laughs> yeah. do that shit to me. I yeah. fucking hate it. Because yeah. it shows me that you're not ready. Mm -hmm. You're just wasting my damn time. And that's why I put out the book. Because it's like in a situation like that, that's me looking ahead into the future and knowing I'm going to be in a situation where I contact somebody I want to work with and they look me up. This motherfucker wrote a book. Yeah, I didn't even shit. look you up. Yeah. I saw I when you said that sentence, I go, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to look at your page and yeah. shit. Because, you know, I go through all my DMs when I saw it and I saw a lot of people ask me to work and I look at their stuff. I'm like, oh, man, that's not what even what you do. Mm -hmm. It's not what you do. I need somebody that that this is their profession if I'm going to do a yeah. podcast. I could have done a podcast five years ago. Mm -hmm. Shitty. And like, in my apartment. See, I always thought like, damn, I'm working with big name comedians. I'm going to start, I'm going to get my money working for famous comedians. Like eventually you if, I, you would. if I work hard enough, like eventually this is, this only makes sense. But it, that whole chapter of my career was building up credentials. And it's more valuable. To get to the point to now where it's like, oh, I can be an executive producer of a show. Yeah. Yeah, and I had the when I reached out to you or when I like came into contact with Panay Films, I have the credentials. They this motherfucker works for that's how they introduced me. You're like, this motherfucker works for X, Y, and Z. And then now they have a different level of respect dealing with me. Now it's like Because it's not like it's not like, oh, you you must be fucking awesome. It's not it's like, no, those people trust you. Exactly. Cause I am not gonna just trust a guy to say that's who works for mm -hmm. me. Fuck no. Yeah. Hell no. Mm-hmm. It, because people might do some weird shit and that, that's on you. Yeah. But especially like Joe Rogan. Like, oh, who's Marty? I don't know, Marty. I'm like, no, you do work. You work there. They know who you, like, you're yeah. their guy. Mm -hmm. It's, I hate when people just try to slightly name drop stuff mm -hmm. because it just shows me like, uh, yeah. Are you serious? Cause I don't like when you do that. Cause most I, I, people try my, to keep it under wraps. Exactly. They want you fucking 30 favors getting asked. Yes. Like, nah, fuck, I really work with that. I ain't trying that. to. Yeah, I know. Mm, Stepping my boundary with them because it's you. Th that's a, like a chasm so many people have to try to figure out. It's not easy to deal with. There's a fine line between I'm getting my name out there, I'm working with big people, and I'm getting paid. I'm getting taken advantage of a little bit for my, like, where's my hourly rate at and all this versus what is this going to lead to in the future? And you're just building blocks, though. Yeah, planting yeah, seeds. Of, of course, but you, the way you did it was five years nonstop, which is the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. If you're serious. Yeah. Fucking seven years nonstop, no getting paid. Yeah. If you're serious, you'll keep going. It's not, there's nothing you're serious. I just knew it'd lead to something bigger. Yeah. It can't all be like, it's like, I'm on to something. Yes. Right? I'm on to something. I made people go, hey man, thanks. That was fun. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Yeah. St I, all right, I'm going to do it again. Mm -hmm. Like that's all it was for me. Like, what did you say? You love that movie too? I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Let me do another thing. Yeah, and then yeah. just kept going. And then I started talking. Then when we met, I don't ever talk on camera this long until I started doing story time. So when you was like, let's do a podcast, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to start. Mm -hmm. And even when we started, I look back on those videos. I'm like, ah. Oh. I just watched back the first few moments of our first ever trial run video. We should put it out at the end of the season. Oh, the first, it's really first funny. video. It's, it's, it's because you. it's like... You're, those first moments, you were like, okay, fuck, we're doing it. Oh, all fuck, right, what fuck. do I say? I can't fuck up, right? Because it's all like one string. Ah, shit. But then after like one or two little takes, you just find your groove. And yeah, because I remember the rolling. first one, I'm like, can I do the intro like 70 more times? Because <laughs> I fucking hate it. Because uh -huh. I do my intros. I, I posted one today on the Dope Jill channel. I'm like this, like, hey, so back in the ninth grade, I did the, 
So back in the 10th grade, I did this because I remembered, wait, no, nah, bitch, you were that. That's 10th grade when you met her. Scratch. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to. It's weird. It's weird because I feel like one day we could be doing the. So the Jimmy Kimmel thing, the late night. Mm-hmm. So what's up, guys? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like I could do that because I can. Oh, Cloris sure. Leachman, you're totally. old as shit. I could talk to Cloris Leachman. Yeah. She's fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh, uh, Logan Paul, what's up, man? Let's talk. I feel like I have that for sure. twelve to ninety exactly. age range you pretty can talk locked to anybody in. Yeah, like, like I can associate and talk. I knew Kellen was going to be like, "What the fuck?" He's fucking funny. Yeah. I love that guy. He's but very. You cool. were astonishing him with all your references. That's because he's not used to it, man. Most no, people I, seem like, "How old are you? 20, 23? Mm-hmm. Like, even if I was twenty three, motherfucker, still not all the same shit. Uh-huh. It's just how you brought up. Yeah, yeah. Like the shit they should like. And I don't know. I feel like we could do a late night show. I feel like we could do a talk show. Uh, Mario Lopez, whenever you're ready to be like, hey, man, I know I'm buff, but Thomas, you could take over my spot. <laughs> like, I'll take over Mario Lopez spot. Uh-huh. I'm trying to get buff right now. If I, yeah. How about this world? If I get buffer than Mario Lopez, put me on Jimmy Kimmel late night show. Because that means I've been working my ass uh-huh. off. Because that fool's ripped. And he's like uh-huh. 60. I know he's probably yeah, not he's been 60. Ripped since like the early 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> fucking wrestling and fucking uh-huh. what was it uh saved by the bell when they wrestled in like the hallway uh-huh. it was so odd like oh you guys are on a set couldn't have just made it look like a gym or something. <laughs> you wrestled in the yeah, middle of the like... hallway they did that in power rangers too mm. i'm sorry i'm starting to reference a bunch of dumb shit uh-huh. but power rangers jason red 220 221 yeah right bitch you uh-huh. grabbed it 220 sorry marty i'm just going off topic um ready <laughs> let's do it I have, this is the path I was going to take. We got you chronologically all the way up to this point. So for everyone out there, Marty, they always ask, you should uh, have Marty sit at the table. Here we are. You've heard from birth to now, yeah. right? Pretty much. So I want to get into like the in-betweens. You were doing some wild ass shit as a kid too. Because <laughs> you told me some stories <laughs> All right, for everyone out there, while we're getting set up, Marty is way more aggressive telling <laughs> stories not. outside of the camera than he is on camera. So, why why are you carrying around a fake gun? To scare? Okay, all right. Are you talking about what we were talking about earlier? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about what we were talking about earlier, man. That's exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. No, we had a... Me and Jamal had a stretch where we'd go to the... um to the flea market and get BB guns and then paint them all black and have them on us just to fuck around with basically. But they definitely look like real guns. And his bank robbery was shortly after that. And at first I was like, he did use a real gun, but it was in this little stretch of us fucking with all these BB guns. And, uh, and like I said, there was, I keep saying, like I said, because we fucking talked about this earlier. Yeah. But he was doing shit with the BB guns that foreshadowed him doing crazy shit with real guns. Uh, just on some terrorizing innocent people thing. Yeah. And we're not trying to sit here and just put this guy down. We're just no. talking about stories you guys used to, shit used yeah, to do. Yeah, no. This, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, the BB guns weren't really a huge deal. The one little incident, he scared this girl with one that, you know... Uh, and, but then there wasn't there, like, we were talking about we we're, there's this whole situation and we're in the backseat of this girl's car and this fool, we're at a red light and this kid rolls, ro- rolls down the window. There's a father and son next to us, points the BB gun at him. And like the fear in this dad's eyes, like in his son in the front seat, young kid now, especially that I look back at that. I've always remembered that because that was one of the moments I, I was like, oh, we're different. That was one of the moments I realized we're, I would never do some shit like that. We're different, bro. You're some darkness inside there. Ugh. And there were, <laughs> I mean, you Man, know, I hope all the best for the guy. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't, I had to really, because like I said, after everything that happened, I was really mad for a couple of years, but then I just, as my son got older, I looked, I, I look at how like vulnerable he is, how sensitive he is. And just like, I could never imagine a little kid going through what he went through. And that's and why you're like, okay, I he understand. He was doomed. He could never have normal relationships or yeah. normal life. I mean, he like, you know, he heard from his mom from the first time ever while he was in jail. 
like on the back of a napkin type shit because he was bumping into his biologicals in prison. Whoa. And like he found, yeah, I mean, he found out like there, it was a whole crazy saga of oh, finding out sad. where you come from while you're in prison. Yeah. But what a place to find out. Yeah. Hey, here's a napkin from your mom. Basically. Why the fuck did you get this? Yeah. <laughs> That's to be the first thing yeah. I asked. Like, yo, could you sneak some cool shit in if you're going to sneak in this? No. <laughs> That'd be my first thing to yeah. ask. I mean, it's always, I mean, imagine you don't, you know, you don't know who your parents are and then you, you might not want to find out. Oh, yeah. Or I get the that. scenario behind, you know, everything. Crazy shit. So I came, I definitely came to a place where I don't walk around mad about the shit anymore. I mean, that feels like a past life, all that. Like, I don't, I also think that type of shit gives you cancer. Like, yeah, the negative shit. Con- holding big, long, having conversation right now. I bet you, you guys just want a lot of you just stopped having this conversation 10 minutes ago where you're having a full on argument with a person that's not even there about a situation that happened five years ago. Mm hmm. I've done that for Yeah, I still years. do it, but it can consume you at the same time. Yeah, you got to stop. I have full-on conversation with people that fucked me, and I go, like, just fools that played the shit out of me uh-huh. when I thought they were my friends. Yeah. And I just, like, it literally physically hurts yeah, my yeah. head thinking about stopping. You can have stretches people. of weeks where something really bothers you oh, like that, or fuck. months or years. Yes, even. that's why I can't, that's why I always say, I'm so glad I wasn't a gangbanger, I'd be dead, because I can't let nothing crazy shit go like uh-huh. that like what'd you do uh-huh. what'd you do like, oh i'm never going away <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah no, i can't do yeah, it like I know exactly i'm gonna throw up thinking about it mm-hmm. so don't do that for everyone out there you had to let it go because it's gonna kill you eventually thinking about yeah it. and you know i understood i just grew up more yeah. and just like you know people go through crazy shit in their lives or whatever i don't know but my circle's so tight at this point that, you know, it really doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Nor, and it was good for me to be completely isolated because I didn't still have one foot in Buffalo for, I didn't go back for five, six years. It's crazy. So I was completely isolated and I just made, you know, a whole new life out here. And when I did go back to Buffalo and saw all my boys, it was fucking amazing. Like when we went out to dinner and that was really cool. Like, you know, we're out at a bar and shit and Tight. a bunch of them came through. But then... Also, when we, I was like, went back to the hood for a little bit and we were chilling and shit and like seeing some of my peripheral boys that I might not have expected to see and them come through, like telling the younger dudes there about like, uh, you know, this motherfucker's a legend right here. Like, all this shit he went through, all this shit, like really like they're on some music shit still. He's putting in context. What the fuck you got to do to make it happen type of shit? Like a coach, like a, like a coach that really cared about you would like yeah. fucking shout some shit at you. He, that's, that's what he were. was doing. Yeah. And that felt really cool just to sit there and be like, damn, I'm on the opposite side of this. Well, fucking fence I don't now. even care about that no more, which is crazy too. That is crazy too. That's wild. Last time I was fuck. in those apartments was we were on a, it was our life mission. I mean, it's my whole identity, my whole, I, like I'm like that, I guess. Yeah. The videos you've sent me of you filming your homies. Yeah. Yeah. In these houses. Cause and it's shit. cool. Cause we were going to make a DVD. We were going to like put out a DVD at some point. And you know, I got all this fucking hood footage. You and that beard and I all had the that chin, shit. shitty chin strap. Yeah. And all that crazy beard. It just like, well, that white dude's got a pistol. <laughs> That's all I look at. Well, that guy stands with a, he's got a pistol right there. I could see it. Like, damn, you're the only white motherfucker. Out Yo, that's because when I went to Oregon, I'm like, damn, I'm brown as shit. I'm the only brown uh-huh. motherfucker here. When I went to my school, I wait. Uh-huh. <laughs> Whoa. I don't feel safe, I guess. And I know that sounds terrible, but it's more of like, did I come to a good town mm-hmm. or a racist yeah, town? Yeah, what kind of white town what is this? What kind of white town is this? But the same with a, uh, you go to like a predominantly... Asian town, go, yo, are these like the cool old Asian chill, like watering plants, or are these the fools with Uzis? Uh-huh. Because there's always, though, that's my same people think with Mexicans. Oh, I went to East LA and it was fine. Like, yeah, not all Mexicans are gangsters, yeah, stupid, yeah. but it's what you have to assume. Like, so which part of town? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You can always tell when it's a, when you ever see a 99 cent store, you know you're, you're getting to the Uzis. <laughs> there's never a 99 cent store where there's targets. You know what I'm saying? That, like right next to, fuck, there's Not a 99 cent store right next there's to 99 Target. Cent store. There's 99 cent stores next to the Dollar Generals every fuck within a three yep. mile radius. Like yeah, there's everywhere. a lot of checking the cash. 
mm-hmm. check and goes. Yeah, a lot yeah. of those, you're like, uh, lock, roll them up. <laughs> like if I can, National Lampoons. But no, dude, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's different. It's funny seeing the, like, damn, are you really out here just chilling? Fuck. Cause, cause you don't think of it. Cause I know you as this person. So I'm like, I would never roll around just chilling with a gun with my homies. No. But now it's different. I have a lot of friends that have guns, and it's like, mm-hmm. you guys are all adults and fathers. I know. And I'm, I just got my gun license, and I feel, like, responsible. Yeah, you need that. What I'm saying, when you were younger, it's like. Yeah, it's crazy. You're rolling just, around with Well, like, you, you were. The future in the fucking car. Yeah, yeah. You, you were. I would never put myself in that position because my mom, I'm going to get my ass beat. And then go to jail. Yeah. I was always Fuck super scared of jail. I never had a fear of my parents. They were, it was never physical. But I was always super, super scared of jail, though. Yeah, you no don't want to go it. be, oh, I can't leave? Yeah. Oh, that's my thing. Like, how long do I got to be here? I go crazy. I go fucking insane at normal things. Like, yes. I can't. And then when Jamel went to jail, like I was, I was going up there all the time, and I was very, I was mentally in there with him. It was like traumatizing, like being a young kid in there and grown man's jail, and I was just like waiting for him and shit. Like I extra knew I like was aware of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to all the prisons when I was a kid, so I was kind of like, I never thought of it like that. All I thought was my only fear growing up was I hope some dumb motherfucker don't shoot me in the face. Mm. That was my always thing because I'm I'm always super cool. Everyone knows me, like, mm-hmm. but there's gonna be that one stupid ass fool when yeah. I'm selling a sack to, and they see me selling it or something dumb. Or I always sold some weed to my friends, but like I always thought, like, oh, where you from? I shut the fuck up, man, dude. Do you need to ask me where I'm from, dude? <laughs> do you hear the way I'm talking to you? Yeah, like, does my geography yeah. really matter? Do you see my vans? <laughs> I'm not affiliated, asshole. Now it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. People, gangsters wear vans. I get that. But that was my fear of that. And yours is jail. Like, yeah. jail never so much because I saw it and go, oh, well, I have to get that too? Fuck. I have to stab. Oh, fuck. Uh, can I just read a book? Can mm-hmm. I just be the guy that reads a book? Oh, that's nerd. Can I just be the nerd? Mm-hmm. The nerd that helps you guys write stuff or something? Yeah. But... The jail thing, all that. I was scared of the randomness. I was scared of like, I was always aware of like, damn, I could be sitting here and a bullet come through the window. Or I thought of like, that a lot too. Like the, yeah. like randomness, like you're playing basketball like the kid at Delaware Park the other night. Ugh. Playing, next thing you know, you're fucking dead on the court. Because uh, you fouled the motherfucker too hard or something. Me like think I talk well. Him. I'm good at de-escalating things. Very, very, very good at it. Because I always go, yo, if this wasn't happening, you'd probably smoke weed. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. You smoke weed? Me too. Can we just like talk about this? That's my thing. It's That's so fucking funny you say that. It's true though. Anytime there's something de escalate by full, I got a blunt. Mm-hmm. Can we not fight? Mm-hmm. We'll just smoke a. Seriously. Wait, who's your. You went to what school? Yo, and then and that's how it always works out. Like, oh, you uh-huh. killed somebody for what? Uh-huh. Who's co- oh, that's his brother. It's some you knew that kid. <laughs> you fucked up and just killed some guy over an argument. I hate it so fucking much. That's why I hate going to stores. I hate, I hate talking to motherfuckers, grimy fools. I don't like it in public because if I get pet, pissed and I punch somebody, I might get shot. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. Just leave me alone, bro. I just want to go to work and yeah, come yeah, back yeah, and yeah. I guess I do my own thing. I don't go to anywhere. And like I said, I'm I'm pretty good at de-escalating shit. Yeah. Like when it comes to fightings or almost getting shot, like, hey. Because people just need to hear that. Most mm-hmm. people just it's a misunderstanding mm-hmm. 90 percent of the time it's, it's not the boogeyman showing up yeah it's always just a misunderstanding like what'd you say like nothing like some ego shit yeah. it's always a misunderstanding and y'all you back down like no mm-hmm. you back and then someone gets shot mm-hmm. like what like we were talking about earlier it's just it's fucked up but since we're on this shit topic and i want to like i said i wanted to brush it somewhere else you pulled Interview with a drug dealer on me right now and goes, Yeah, you know, he scared that girl with the gun. You told an <laughs> aggressive ass story in the car uh-huh. and you told me everything of what happened. And in here, you go, Well, you scared, scared a girl with a gun. <laughs> you, oh, yeah, that you whole story. motherfucker. You told me an elaborate ass, <laughs> Whoa, oh, we're about to do a podcast right now. Save it. So we'll skip the whole cool part. About this girl was a dumbass, and they went uh, to fucking scare her, make her think she was getting robbed, and so she'd be uh, stuck. No, this girl was like my borderline half a girlfriend. Like I was telling you, she would like. Oh, that's right, that's right. 
she would like literally come by and see me on the my lunch breaks at the mall and shit. I was working at the mall and then hang around and wait because she was from like by Niagara Falls. Like her, she had like a rich family. She liked coming down in the fucking Lackawanna and shit. So then she like this one time, but she was always so fucking snaky and sketchy and doing extra snaky shit. But I didn't give a fuck. I I really didn't. So she was would like literally wait for me in the parking lot of uh, Walgreens by my mom's house while I was working. And then she was doing like some super extra extra shit or whatever. And Jamal walked up to the car with the fucking BB gun and like tapped on the window with the fucking BB gun or some shit. Scared the shit out of her while she's like, and then I'm there. And then you like, dick. you know, we get in and then we're, and she's then like the, driving us back into the father and son thing. That's happens. when that happened. He was off the Did chain with that shit. Did you to scare her with a gun? I don't think, I didn't ask him, but we were like, we had it. We were like toying around. This is a BB gun. We it. were like, we had it. We were kind of menacing with this fucking thing a little bit at the time. Like we were active with the fucking BB gun. Sounds like <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, no, I mean, he, you're the commercials. <laughs> don't pay. Don't hang around with. Fa- don't play with fake guns. Yeah, when the kid yeah, gets yeah. shot, that was you guys. But I mean, I had a real gun too. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. But this fucking beat. We would shoot each other with the fucking. We were having fun with the fucking BB gun. I get it. But he was just teasing her on some like. She was just so, she played up the, I'm so fucking stupid and suburban. Like, that was her thing, you know? And then, like, he was just, she just came to wild. Like, uh, I want to date a hood guy, but not too. Marty! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, she just saw blue eyes. Yeah. That yeah, yeah. guy. <laughs> I used oh, to, he plays, he raps? Uh huh. I'll even wait for you outside the parking uh-huh. lot. I'll wait all day. <laughs> So, yeah, but that was when that exact incident is when the thing happened when he pointed the BB gun at the, the fucking dad Father and son, and son at the red light. Because that moment always stuck with me. And then, like I said, shortly thereafter, this motherfucker was pulling armed real robberies, robberies and bank robberies. Yeah. Fuck. So did he get out of the bank? Yeah, he was. He got out and was he robbed the, the bank. So took off. They got off on foot. They ran around the corner. Now we're in one of the. They're in one of the nicest suburbs, Kenmore. It's like uh, it's robbed a nice bank. They robbed the police credit union. Okay, like the whatever Kenmore police credit union. Okay, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) but also like, damn, that's a bold move for some holy shit, seventeen year, sixteen year olds. No, we're not gonna rob the bank. We're gonna rob the police (laughs) bank. So when I go to jail, everybody's cheering me when I walk in. So they went in, they did it. They had his car car parked around the corner. He had like almost like your car. It looked like uh almost looked like the training day car, but it was like oh, a Buick. Nice. The Regal. It was like a, yeah, it was a throwback. And they hopped in that. They made a big scene. Everybody saw him in the neighborhood. They peeled out and they're three days later, they're still in the car together. And they got pulled over and they all went the fuck to prison. So if they didn't roll around that car anymore, they wouldn't have caught him? I would they, I mean, they have masks on? I think so. Yeah, bro. What they got away? They got away for Did a couple you ever days. Ask him how much money they got away with. Not really. I didn't he ask specific. Asked. I really didn't. I would have been like, so because well, how much did you get? He didn't. I don't. You know what? I never fucking asked. He said, "Hey, <laughs> you should just give me we to me even, while you're gone." We didn't even. We didn't even. It was so traumatic for my family. We didn't even talk about the actual act. We didn't even talk about it. It's fucking crazy now that I think we didn't. I never asked him how much money they took. I, mean, I don't even know question. where the money went. You should have asked him. You he didn't have money. any fucking money. What? Well, somebody ended up with whatever yeah, money. Somebody they stole. got that money. There was a bunch of dudes though that he was with. Oh, really? Like four dudes went down. Oh fuck! Yeah, they, they were all around in the same car. That yeah, you just robbed a bank with. Yeah, they walked into the police credit union and robbed. Oh my god. Yeah. Savages. Yeah. And I had no idea. Wow. We saw it on the news type of shit. My mom called me. I just met April. What Watching this fuck? shit. Yeah. Like, and I was like, me and him were. The cops chased him away and everything in the cars or they got away. They got out. They, they got away. Yo, the cleanest break ever. They didn't get away. <laughs> That's fucking sad. He was asking for it. Yeah. He's definitely asking. He for was it. on a string. He was going through a lot of shit. You know, he really was. Sounds, yeah, he's all fucked up. That's he was sad. All, like, I remember one time we, um, <laughs> they used to have me house, my aunt and uncle used to have me house set when they would like go places or whatever once they moved out into the suburbs. And Jamal was living in one of these other foster homes on the east side. 
for like time beings and shit. But I would still go get him. We'd still be fucking hanging out the house. I'd be house sitting. So he's no longer like living with my aunt and uncle, but me or like still fucking hanging at the house because I'd go and pick him up and they'd yeah. be gone or whatever. And then like we'd have a, we had a party one time at the house and he got real drunk and he's fucking, I mean, not only did he puke all over the sheets that I had to handle because I was <sighs> like, but then he's like, bro, my mom, like he started talking about us. It was the first time I ever heard him talk about like, yeah, all that shit. We never really talked about it, and like that was just like, damn, bro, I can't. I, that to me is like, I don't know what to do with that level of pain. There's yeah, and then I mean, I, I at some point I realized like, all the people in my life, all my closest people in my life had that level of pain. Like they all had like really bad childhoods, and I was I remember thinking like, damn, I'm really lucky because. When I was really young, like it was dope. It was fine. Like it was just normal. Like That's I didn't awesome. have all this extra shit going on. They just it was just it's normal. Great. Yeah, and I, I I realized that we were different because of that. Like I know I'm not capable. I would never rob in a, a fucking bank, even then. Like even when the dude prison? was telling, even when the dude said rob the but rob a fucking bank. Oh yeah, when he asked you about you were gonna get paid. It wasn't money. in the cards for me. Yeah. You know, like what, you know, and it's the same thing that we were talking about. The difference between, you know, if you're, if you're, if you, if you grow up like, how, you know, and you're a, a good person by your formative years, if not, you could be a cold hearted kid at 15 fucking shooting motherfuckers. For sure. By the time you're 19, you're cold as shit. Yeah. Ugh. I know a lot of people you, like if that. If you too. grow up with your parents beating you and your parents treating you like shit. I mean, I, I saw it a lot. I didn't, I didn't have that. So I wasn't completely, I had a killer instinct. I developed that. Like, I remember like music gave me that, that like real confidence. I didn't really have that in basketball. I was the hardest worker and that was always enough to float me by, but I didn't have a killer instinct. If I had a killer instinct, I would have gone way the fuck further, yeah. but I was nice. But when I started doing music and really hanging out, I developed that and that stuck with me. For sure, I mean, for sure. I'm just saying, like, from all the entrepreneur people, people doing graphics, people doing music, people trying to come up, people trying to work for. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's a blueprint. I, I mean, the way I see it, mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, who is this guy? Like, don't worry, man. He works really fucking hard. That's mm -hmm. all that matters. Yeah, truly. Like, I don't meet a lot of people that have the work ethic like that at all. E fucking ever. Rare. If it's not mm. out, outside of my family, I've met maybe three people like that. Mm. I know. I know. Like. People work hard, they trap and drive and drive. And yeah, I get that, I get that. But it's the making money legitimately mm -hmm. is that the, was the thing. hardest yes. thing ever. Yeah, I never, yeah, I never, I, I never like, you know, I was never hard. selling drugs myself. I never like made a bunch of illegal money. I never had any fucking money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying like you had to do it just literally just working and working, working, yeah. working, working. Like exactly. Nonstop. The unglamorous route. Yeah. Which is <laughs> yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, shit. Worked out. <laughs> <laughs> fucking paid off. That's what I'm grateful for now. Worked out. <laughs> Your house should be done this, this weekend? In like two weeks. It's going to be. You're done. moving in this weekend. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like still being worked on while we're living oh, there for a little shit. bit. But, but you're moving in this yeah. weekend. Mm -hmm. All the rooms yeah. are done? Bedrooms, yeah. I mean, even since I've been here, I've been getting pictures about the fucking updates to the floors went in and. Fuck yeah. yeah. How cool. What a yeah. different feeling. It doesn't feel real yet because it's been just chaos what a, in the fucking Well, what house. a good episode then. Yeah. Literally right before you get into Seriously. your house. Yeah, it's it, good to do this. You're going to move in as this episode's coming out. You'll be mm -hmm. moving in. Yeah. Got to edit this I shit like quick. <laughs> Got to edit this quick. Um, <laughs> it's been two and a half hours. Yeah, hell yeah. Also, you're not getting out of here without telling me the hooker story. <laughs> Yep, I want it. I want it out. <laughs> Cough it up. Okay. The right. hooker story, but with you and April. That hooker story. This is not going to be what people expect. <laughs> <laughs> April's his wife. Yeah. Go. So Hooker story. The night could be... You told me as we were painting this wall black. Oh, really? I was standing right there. You were standing there, and you were low <laughs> getting this thought, and you go... And this fucking bitch. <laughs> That's what we were doing. You were hitting uh -huh. the wall. I, I remember okay. when you told me the story. Okay. Go. Uh, it was the night McGregor fought Khabib. Okay. 
for all our UFC fans out there. So we couldn't find anywhere. We got a ho- we got a hotel at the Hotel Irvine, which is a really nice hotel in Irvine, to watch the hotel because they had it going in the to restaurant. Watch the fight. Yeah, to watch the fight. They had it going in their restaurant. But we got there and it was fucking sold out. Even in the restaurant at the hotel, there's couldn't get in. So we ended up going to a random restaurant and watching it on my phone, which was actually kind of cool. I know, but <laughs> fuck. It was that or nothing. Yeah, literally. I'll lean on my shoulder. Literally. It was, it was all right. You it's know? fine. I do that shit with Rosie all the time. Yeah. But like, would you plan on going somewhere yeah. to do it? So then McGregor got raped and I was borderline devastated. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're Irish. Because I was a huge McGregor fan up until that point, And what Khabib did to him was horrible. It was a decent fight, but oh, Khabib overpowered him. It was brutal. So I started getting drunk, <laughs> which I don't really like the regular do. Irish in yeah. you. Basically, is what you're saying. The Irishman got his ass whooped, so I started drinking. Well, we had a hotel night. We have a baby. Yeah, you're not driving. This is rare. Yeah, this like what, three years ago, probably two. Okay, where we got a babysitter. We got a night at the hotel. I'm like, all right, whatever. So I started drinking. We we go back to the hotel and we're sitting outside. April's like smoking a cigarette outside. There's another. There's this black girl outside smoking a cigarette too, and they start talking. And then this girl, probably about the same age, like she looks pretty normal or whatever. And then she kind of very normal, casually, as in like you're not a tweaker. Yeah, you're not being a creep. No, she's just that's at our the hotel. normal. You have to explain it to the audience yeah, because they're yeah, like, yeah, "What do you mean yeah. normal? <laughs> like, no, bitch, she's not tweaking. Somebody she's not, you would see at Hotel Irvine. Yeah, just a person that's there. Yeah, regular fucking. She doesn't look like yeah, not a tweaker, not a creep, just yeah. a regular person who's staying there. So then. She casually lets it slip. Like, I forget how she said it, but she's like, yeah, you know, I do tri- I turn tricks or whatever. And blah, 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 I'm down. I'm going to San Diego. Hey, oh. she just slid it in like one one would. Like, I just mentioned to you. <laughs> I got a podcast. We record every Tuesday. And, yeah. yeah, I had sex with people for money. It's cool. So she kind of slid that out there. And the way she did it, we're it kind of flowed with the conversation to the point that, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, okay. But the conversation kind of kept going. But then her friend comes. Now, her friend does look like a fucking tweaker. She's about the same age, but she's a white girl. She's got blonde hair. She probably would be pretty if she wasn't a tweaker. And she's acting real fucking weird. Like, so now they're talking back and forth, and we realize. And this whole time, April shit face too. Mm, right? No, she's drunk? No, not like But is she drunk? Me. She's drinking too. But yes. you're fucked up. I'm getting fucked up. But she's definitely more sober than you. Yes. And just happens to yes, be friends with these two much girls. very much so. Yeah, April's... Th- Social. April yeah. will talk yes. to people. Yeah. I would never start a conversation with somebody. Never start a random conversation with somebody. I totally feel you. So, uh, yeah. Nah, leave me alone. I so know. we gather that they're going to San Diego to like. Turn tricks yeah. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so this like older white dude comes out too. And he starts like talking to us. We're just still like smoking. They're standing there. And you're doing this. I'm sitting there. I'm not I'm yeah, I'm drinking now. Yeah, exactly. I'm not obliterated shit face, but I'm I'm pretty fucking drunk. So now this dude starts going off about how he's a Mongol and he's this badass. He's like a biker dude. I thought this dude was a fucking accountant by the looks of him. <laughs> really. And he's telling these girls, he's trying to be a badass in front of these two girls because he's trying to, he's, he smells these two bitches. He's trying to figure out like, so he's talking about how the fucking Mongols run this and that. Now, mind you, I know nothing about biker gangs. I know nothing we about this shit. about the biker gang yes. with Brian last yes. week. Why random? It is. It's just a coincidence. So he's talking all this shit about them you in a good way. This. Yeah. Wait, keep going. Small detail. And, and meanwhile, he's buying them drinks. I, he's overtly trying to kind of feel them out. He's doing everything but like, bitch, give me a quote. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, give me a quote. Yo, that's a good that, stamp it, comment it. <laughs> bitch, give me a quote. How much is ass? Yeah. So it's kind of funny to me, but he is annoying me at the same time. <laughs> yeah, he's I'm in not. Your space. I'm not a part of this. I'm trying to do my own thing here. They probably think. You're running all of them, and they probably thought April was with them too. I don't. Mm, and they're just maybe. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, uh, my friends. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So and also now, mind you. So now he's talking to us. There, he's negotiating with them. But but now he's and, negotiating at this he's, point now. He's b- lightly negotiating. He's negotiating after he bought him a drink. He's like, so what's going to be to go? Like he's asking them, and they're like negotiating back with him. Whoa. Yeah. Now, there's also another just straight up soccer mom that comes over and sits with us too. That April, like, do you want to come sit with us? Because like She's her so family social. was sleeping. 
or whatever. She's so soulful. So a real soccer mom is now in the mix. Just sitting. She doesn't know what she got herself into. It's it's entertaining there's a, for there's this bitch. Fucking sex at this point, it's entertaining going on yes. right in front of yes. her. She doesn't know. So the two girls start kind of like I can see like okay, these bitches are kind of crazy. They're doing some light arguing over this dude, and he's standing there still. He's going back and forth. He's coming back. He's getting drinks. Like ultimately, gotcha. they don't end up doing. They don't end up going back to this dude's room. He bought them drinks. They don't end up going back to this dude's room. Now the girls like. I got some weed up in my room. I remember she said, she said I got some wedding cake up in my room. The black and white chick. The black and white chick. She's like, let's go get the weed. So me and April. Where's soccer mom? Soccer mom's with us. Me, April, and soccer Shut mom. Shut the fuck up. Yes, she comes with us. Oh, she must be hurting yes. for fucking fun. Yes. Her I mean, family went funny. to sleep. She went, yeah, she's I'm going to go with these random outside. hookers yeah. and couple <laughs> yeah. to smoke weed. Yeah. She's like following along now. She's cool. Security is also aware of these bitches. Like, cause I was going to get drinks. I'm talking to security guard. He's like, are these two bitches bothering you back here? They're like, no, they're fine. Like he's, they were aware. And they, this, oh, they weren't staying there. They were. Oh, but, but they security must have been was aware of these like, bitches. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, so we go up to the room. Weird. Yeah. So we go up to the room to get this bitch's weed. And she's, oh my God. So me and April and the mom are like sitting on the couch in the hotel room and they come in new soccer mom you yes april yes i'm pretty much blackout drunk at this at point. this point you're i did have the mindfulness <laughs> to record some of this it's in my photos Please somewhere i have to i could it's in my photo Please somewhere find it and put it on the screen friend to you and have helped you you want me to go to fucking san diego and help you save you from your punk ass phone are you fucking out are you fucking you're a fucking piece of shit i'm a piece of shit now get the fuck out i'm a piece of shit now now i'm about to call you are you fucking kidding me get the fuck out bitch get the fuck out are you fucking kidding me i swear because there was a moment where i recorded some of this yes i'll try to find it uh they start arguing the hookers yes and the, the black girl grabs this bitch by the hair and boom 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 starts punching this bitch out of nowhere it builds up i know but you while guys she's just looking sitting for the weed it happens and they're quick. arguing yes and then you guys see oh oh shit i pull out the phone i'm black I'm, I'm you have the fight yes camera? i pulled out where they were fighting and recorded a few seconds of it on my phone uh so she starts this. beating this bitch up the white girl is not fighting back, but the black girl is being very casual about it. Like on some, she's talking to her in a stern voice and then she's fucking punching her and then she's back to explaining to her in a stern voice. Like, <laughs> it was like that. It was kind of weird. Weird. And the, the white girl kind of ate it. Like I, there was something wrong with this bitch. So the white girl kind of like, something wrong with her. they're fighting, they're screaming. They got somebody in San Diego waiting for them. It's probably not the first time this bitch has punched this other bitch. Me and April are fucking dying at laughing. this point. Security ends up coming in. So you guys are dying laughing. What soccer mom do? I'm not really aware of what she was doing, but she was there. And you're I was, cracking up at this girl get her ass. Whooped. I was really, really drunk, but I knew it was funny. I knew I knew I needed to record but it. But I knew it was funny. <laughs> Me and April were laughing. She, it was it was just funny how she was beating her up. <laughs> so I told you not to fold you like that. <laughs> that, that, that. Yeah, basically, like that right? Shit. I'm looking for the fucking weed. Yeah, and punched her again. Yeah, like she wasn't yelling. They were arguing. She was speaking to her very abruptly, and she punched her a few times. Wow. Fucking throw her around a little bit her by her hair. Point? She didn't do like ground and pound shit. The girl wasn't She's fighting holding back. Her up and punching her in the yeah, face. Yeah, that's even worse. Yeah, the girl wasn't fighting back, but she was like manic. So security oh. was like outside. Security ends up they're already in. outside the door. Yeah, they're already knowing. I don't know why they're they're like they're Maybe like because they were loud before beating the fuck out of yeah. each other. Could have been. So you, just, you saw so the then, fucking you saw the, the yeah that the, was the breather. one little moment of their little trip. You got the breather outside, and then they went back to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, probably. Yeah, these bitches are crazy. So now we go back down in front of the hotel Irvine with this bitch's weed. Hold on, and security comes in, says what. What was the noise? Security like didn't that? make a big deal. We're like, we're, we're going out. We're going downstairs. Something like that. I'm I'm way too drunk to remember exactly what was said. They didn't like arrest anybody. They didn't break it up. They just were there. So she punched her a few it times. It was one dude. He was stopped. probably fucking one of these bitches, to be honest. The security guard. Got you. Uh, he was lurking around. 
So now we go back and now we're in front of the hotel. I'm kind of remembering like this by like scenes. And as soon as the weed came out, I shouldn't have smoked the fucking weed. Oh, so, so wait, she beat her ass and then the security came and you went, don't worry, we got the weed. We're going downstairs. Yes. The white girl. I don't, I don't think she came with us. You talking Me? about the soccer mom? No, I'm talking about the, the girl hooker? that was getting punched. So, the not the white hooker. So you're with yeah. the black hooker, April, and the and soccer mom. Soccer mom. She Going stuck downstairs around? with the weed, yes. Oh, she's <laughs> desperate need for some fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hold so on, no. soccer mom's a white lady? Uh-huh. Even She looks like a straight-up minivan. Like, Love it. Picture next to soccer mom in the Love dictionary. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> she go downstairs, you hit the weed. Uh-huh. I remember, because I was like, oh, wedding kick. That sounds nice. So I'm smoking this joint. Soccer mom's talking to me. I hit the joint, and I'm drunk. Drunk. So now it's like I'm spinning. April's sitting next to me. The security's still back here. We're in front of the hotel. Security's letting you smoke? Yes. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just chilling. And then I'm talking to her. And I puke everywhere. Oh. In the front of this hotel. So, yeah. <laughs> was it the end I of the night? It was the end of the night. They shuffled me up uh, up into the room. I thought I was about to have some glorious fucking hotel night with April. You know, I, that's what I expected. Fast forward to me dry heaving and having the fucking spins. Uh, and nothing happening. Aside from that. <laughs> Just threw up everywhere. <laughs> Marty, you're the only guy ever to be with his wife, two hookers, a soccer mom, blunts, and throw up and pass out. I mean, probably for the best. Yeah, I was like... Probably yeah. nothing else cool could have came of that situation if you guys would have hung out with that girl anymore, any longer. Nah, next next up was like, can I live with you guys? Can yeah, with you guys? exactly. <laughs> Yo, I can clean. I can yeah. do stuff. <laughs> April, don't worry. No, I, Just drive me wanna. to San Diego. No, and yeah. Let me borrow your debit card. I'm a holistic room. healer, and you have to take <laughs> me to my appointment. <laughs> exactly. I know how this shit goes. Yeah. <laughs> you did not go into that much detail when you told me. I'm so happy I asked uh -huh. you to say that. That's the hooker story. So you, so you, that's the night could be became my favorite fighter. <laughs> when you saw black hooker beat up a white hooker, it could be beat up McGregor. McGregor. Yeah. An Irish hooker. An Irish hooker. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, it was a great story. I'm I'm glad I was as fucked up for it as I was because it added to it. Me, if you weren't, you would be like breaking it up and it would have been more serious. Yeah. 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 No, me puking everywhere at the end was a nice touch too. Nice. Yeah, I usually don't get drunk, nor do I get pukey fucking drunk. It's happened like four times. That was one of them in a super classy hotel. Not that classy. The security guard letting I hookers so. chill. Yeah, and I like, mean, well, I mean, hookers are cool. I met a lot of cool ass hookers, and I didn't know they were hookers mm. until like later. I go, Wait, this bitch is hooking. I thought she was just really cool. <laughs> I mean, you're still cool, but so, damn. super friendly. Damn. damn. <laughs> I mean, uh, I was with. Magic Don Juan. You know who that is? Yeah, I've hung out with him before. Okay. So you've been with a bunch of hookers before, too, with him? Well, I shouldn't say I've hung out with him before, but I've been around where he's been before. Okay. So he's a pimp, and the girls around him, I'm assuming, are hookers. I met the coolest hooker ever. Escort. Lady of the night. Whatever you want to call it. Ready? We're in a circle. We're on Hollywood Bull or on Santa Monica at the store. We're in the back and, and we're smoking weed. I didn't know Magic Don Juan does not smoke weed in his, Out mouth. Of his mouth. I didn't know that. He only smokes it. I in didn't his know nose. that was exclusive. He promised his mom he would stop smoking weed when she was dying. So he goes, Okay. <laughs> he never said nothing about my nose. Jesus Christ. Okay. And I only smoke joints. And he only smokes blunts. I never heard the term white boy when it comes to joints. I pass a joint. He goes, oh, I don't smoke white boys. And I went, oh, what a fucking awesome name for a oh, joint. I never heard that I either. never heard that in my life. But I went, oh, that's fine. And he passed it. And I saw him pass the blunt. And I saw him hit it. He knows and went, I'm so glad you passed up on my joint. I would have been kind of pissed if you put that in your nose. Of course. I didn't know. How could you ever I assume? mean, if he does that, that's do your thing. That's cool. On your personal. Yeah, that's cool. Joint. Blunts. But well, that's why he's probably he was like, nah, I'm gonna smoke my blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he was being cool. I mean, he's a he's a cool dude. Could you imagine he just hands it back, staring in your eyes? Not that. Everyone in his crew hit it through the nose too. What? Oh, that's just their thing. No, I think they're like, nah, you guys smoke like that too. The girls at least. All his girls that were with him. 
<laughs> but I was like, wait. And I found out later about the, like, is that motherfucker smoking through his nose? So anyway, to the hooker. We're standing there, and this chick with him was mad cool as fuck. She was hella tight. She wasn't forward, but she was cool. I was with Rosie. We're all, me, her, Rosie are talking. And I look at her heels and I go, wait. She's like a little bit taller than me, like a 30 year old black chick. I was like 24 at the time. She has like a blonde, like wig or some shit on. And I'm like, this bitch looks tight as fuck. She looks like she's dressed for a nightclub. It's four in the afternoon. We're smoking mm-hmm. weed at a. I'm like, you look like, oh, you're, oh, you're a hooker. Oh, that's why. Anyway, her shoes had no heel. So she's like, no, nah, so my legs stay strong. She's Jesus. standing on heels. Like a ballerina. And there's no heel. Mm. And she's like, no, nah, she's like a certain type of work. Like it's a thing to keep my leg. I'm like, wow, you're flexing at all Literally. times. And then she's like, yeah, I'm good. And then she like did this ass shake thing when she dropped to the ground on her fucking shoes. And Rosie was like, what the fuck? I'm like, damn. You're strong as fuck. Anyway, that was a really cool, cool hooker right now. Her name was Pepper. She get her on soft white underbelly. Jesus Christ. No, she was a cool hook. She had her shit together. Mm. She's not a soft white underbelly hooker. <laughs> she was awesome. But that was my little hooker story. And she was cool. <laughs> but she was tight. She's and that was athletic. it. Yes. Bro, no heel. The fuck is that? It's like interesting. It's like it's almost like being a, like a freelance graphic designer. Like, what stop, level of sticker are you? What? How the much fuck? do you charge? <laughs> like, there's a big chasm. You, you got just started the <laughs> sentence. Like that. I ha- just a circle. Just guys, we're just gonna bring this back. <laughs> being a graphic being a uh, graphic artist is kind of like being a hooker. How much do you charge? No, it's not at all. It's all the service industry. Okay, the service industry. Because <laughs> you got people out there doing graphics for fifteen dollars. All right. You got hookers out there working at that rate. Yes. And then you got these super high class ones that of are like, course. damn, this looks like a classy woman, but it's super expensive. So there's the parallel. Yo, so <laughs> make sure you make a marker and have your daughter leave the room right before we start this part of the conversation when you're watching this episode. Yeah, no, she might miss those words. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. Yeah. Service. Yeah, it's kind of like being a hooker. <laughs> Stop. Um, Hooker story. It's a good clip. Love it. You from birth to now. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, I love. I loved it. I, I like. I said I didn't want to ask because I there's like eight stories in my head I could think that you've told. I'm like, yo, you gotta tell it in the fucking podcast. Yeah, but right. I'm gonna leave them. I'll leave them. I'll, you say leave them wanting more. Yeah, exactly. Leave them wanting more. We're not gonna get it all I'm out. A of slow there. drip. Kind of I'm a yeah. slow drip. <laughs> exactly. Like a like for the story times, I was like, I wish I didn't throw eight stories per episode, <laughs> yeah. season one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, why you yeah. still like, ah, oh, let's pace it. Let's pay. That's what we're doing with this. Like, there's more episodes to come. Yeah, we got seasons. There's more stuff. There's seasons. This is season one. So there's yeah, just more yeah. to come. Fuck yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about, man? I don't think so. I think we kind of were right where we yeah, we're Two forty five, wherever we want to be. Here. Damn. Yeah. Two forty five. The least amount of weed ever smoked. I can't believe I didn't roll more joints, but also good. It helps me remember what I'm talking about. Yes. Also good. Cause sometimes I just get lost. Joint I'm like, wait. It's not like it's sh- like I lose my memory because when we talk about this sober, I'll forget what we talked about. Yeah. It's just so much conversation at once mm-hmm. you forget. So I'm glad. Good. Three joints is enough. All right. <laughs> um I think that was it, man. Episode 31. Yeah. How what are we yeah. going to call this episode? I don't know yet. I don't know. What am I think? Random quotables. Yeah. Slap in the face to God. Let's, let's call it that. Like uh-huh. your last quote. Mm. Yeah, see, that would have made a hell of an episode title. But we're like, YouTube. YouTube's really not going to yeah. like that. Christian YouTube probably won't fuck with that either. Uh-huh. Um, no, we'll, we'll stay off topic. Guys, this is, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's coming out on my birthday. Your birthday just happened. Mm-hmm. Good timing. Yeah, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother episode. We have we have a bunch of stuff in the works, guys. There's a there's there's stuff happening every fucking day. It feels yeah. like now we're just looking for a booking agent. Mm-hmm. We're just looking for a booking agent. And what else? Oh, we're moving sets. So this oh next week's the last 
mm-hmm. episode in the set. Okay. All right. All right. We'll Think see. Think about it. I mean. Well, maybe two more. Yeah. Because we want to give a week to prep everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. September is the last time we're in here. It's going to be October. It's going to be October for 100%. And that's when we're going to kick off season two, I think, right? I think so. I think we'll change it to season two. Yeah. Yeah. I think we we should change the season two, especially if we're just moving over. Yeah. It's going to be the same set. It's just a little different. Production value is going to go way up. Way up. The sound's going to go way up. We're in a tighter space. It's not dragging extension cords 45 feet to the Way more professional for guests. To come in and not just see all my inventory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, it's a very chill episode, man. Yeah, hell yeah. I feel like we didn't go crazy. No. Wasn't and nothing wild. I appreciate all the fans love, like, you know, I really do. They really show me a lot of love. But Fuck yeah. That, that really is like fuel to the fire. Like I really do think about those comments at times when I'm like super stressed, super tired, or even not. That really does keep me going. Like we get so many amazing comments. I feel bad that like I can't respond to all of them but bro you're way more busy than i am you can't respond to them all can't like all. respond to all of them with a meaningful response about how much like i really appreciate it like if i respond to you saying i appreciate that fist bump like i really fucking appreciate that shit yeah it's not like a copy i paste response yeah which you know we're just I'm, I'm getting a lot more messages and a lot more that's becoming more in my routine now to interact with the fans and i love that that's all i've that's all i want even with music like yeah it just came a different way yeah which is so wild. Yeah. That's what you're striving for, except you left it. That's to do a huge else. life lesson though, because podcasting didn't even exist. I didn't I could have never said I want to be a podcaster. No. It didn't even exist. But you work with what's in front of you and then when you get there you just know what's right. And you can't be afraid to let go of who you were for like who you want to be. You gotta understand you're gonna change. It's gonna unfold in chapters. You're not gonna like the same shit and do the same shit. You're not supposed to. Especially when you're on you're trying to be an entrepreneur and build your own business. You know? Most inspirational podcast episode of all time, <laughs> motherfucker. All right. This is fucking, this is called 12 Mile. All right. This is called 12, the, the, le- the last leg. All right. This is how you're supposed to do it. Damn. Damn. It's, it's crazy because when I think about it, that was a whole fucking movie we went through mm. just for the characters in your life and the things happening. I could see it. I could totally see it. Yeah. I love it. There's a lot more. We could do a lot more of these. I know that's what's saying. Like, ah, this would probably yeah. be about a t- nine hour podcast if yeah. we really wanted to go. And we could do it. But I'm not going to do that to you guys. Yeah, we'll sprinkle these in once in a while. Yeah, we'll do them once in a while. All right. This is the Marty O'Neill episode or the Marty episode or the way, the way I like to see it is uh, I don't see a lot of producers, people doing camera shit that have, that do online stuff. That, you already did that before you were that. So I feel like yeah. it's not like more a producer. It's like co-host when we don't have a guest. Yeah. Yeah. I just That's how I see it. I yeah. don't see it like. I see you. Uh, how do you say it? It's. It's not like the talk show host with Conan and Andy Richter's there because he's there just to talk sometimes. Mm-hmm. And he's not really putting an in input. We'll have a whole fucking episode of just. Yeah this nonstop. It's nice to, that I can do that to just kind of switch it up. Yeah, it's, I, but I then like when it. there's a guest here, I, I want to let the guest have their time. And like, if I'm a part of the cool, if not, the, like it's just whatever happens, happens. Like, yeah, no, I'm saying these are my favorite ones though. Yeah. yeah. Yo, this is what we'll do on FaceTime all the fucking time. Yeah. It's kind of a twofer. Yeah. It right now. feels like we, <laughs> we would have done this already anyway. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Like last night when I was fucking lifting, I'm like, I just have a 50 minute conversation with Marty in the middle of this. Mm-hmm. Lift day. Lift Holy shit. Lifting. I forgot. Yeah. Cause you got, like I said, like I didn't have any friends when I moved since I moved here. Yeah. Really. So I haven't really spoke about all this shit to anybody. April was there for the whole thing. Ah, uh, so you never said it out loud. I've never. I, why would you? A lot you? of these times we're talking about this shit. It's I'm like, what I need you to do. I want you to start writing down one sentence from a story. And start keeping track. Like, yeah. You know, I'm like, hey, I know what I want to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. Have I think I think you should start having a story or at least a t- or something. Because I like I like the talking. I like seeing the bounce off and shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one just ran out of time. That one just did too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're good then? Okay. Um so yeah, I think it's I think it's better. I I every single comment is positive. You know what yeah, I mean, not, yeah. not, nobody's like, oh, who's this fucking dude, Mario? Like, no, it's awesome. It's the other person on the show. It just worked out nicely. It's just, I, I love it. I love 
the way it goes back and forth. Because I always watch everything as not myself as a person watching yeah, yeah. something. Mm -hmm. but, oh, this guy's awesome. It's different because we have the whole dope is Yola push tree shit going on too. So it's like we split our of, time a lot. Yeah. And we're just really immersed with each other. So we know what's going on like 360. Yeah. Everything. It's not a lot. A lot of other situations. It's like, you know, it's like a job. It's like, oh, yeah. That's my producer. Hey, like uh, what you, What'd you do this weekend? What'd you do for Christmas? Yeah, yeah, thing? yeah, exactly. What do you mean what'd you do for Christmas? Motherfucker, I was on FaceTime with your yeah, stupid yeah, ass. Exactly. That's how I, it's like, <laughs> yeah. full, I was there for an hour and a half on FaceTime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like when I first got with Fighter and the Kid and all them, like I wanted that. I wanted, I came from a team mentality with music. I, I was all for but that. But also for them, it's but more it wasn't, of like, we just need a guy to get this done. Yeah, we have it wasn't, so much happening. It wasn't time for that. Yeah, yet. it's not. That's it was the way time it should have been. for me to build my clients up. Mm -hmm. And then it's like now, then it's like. Because they're in positions that we'll be in. And imagine how busy they're going to, they are there as we are right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, shit. yeah. Oh, I know because we came into this as business owners. A lot of people come into podcasting as celebrities. Yes. The successful ones. Yes. We're coming. And we're just as business owners I'm the doing first it every producer day. producer to come in with a full blown business already. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, people come in as engineers. Yeah, the people forget like podcasts. I love it. It takes so much time, but also Dope is Yellow channel, my other channel, Clo, all the orders, doing the orders. Also, me and Rosie have to live our life sometime and say hi to each other. I don't want to just be working all the time and I see Rosie at night type mm -hmm. of shit. That's fucking stupid. There's a lot more going on than just the podcast. So that's what, dude, I'll forget. Like, yo, it's time to fill the podcast tomorrow. Oh, shit. It's fucking. Yeah, Damn, right. that week went by fast. Mm. Posting the podcast reminds me that, oh, shit, we got to film tomorrow. Mm. I, I, it's like, because I'm always so fucking busy until I got the schedule. The schedule I got, did you know I have four days off last week? Mm. Where I didn't film at all? Mm. Four days. Because I did the extra videos that yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, So I had four days where I was just like. And you got videos on the stash. Yep. <laughs> it's never happened. Yeah. I love it so much. S scheduling myself. Get yourself organized and watch your life change for the better. As yeah. soon as I got organized, I went, oh, my fucking God, I'm on a schedule. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Knowing what I need to get done and not going, oh, yeah, fuck, oh, yeah, fuck. I'll get it to you right now. Oh, shit, I'll get it to you right now. And two weeks later, I go, oh, my God, I never fucking said I'm a piece of shit. Yes. That's how I've been living my life my whole life, and it's just not good. A little bit of discipline. A little bit. A little bit of time it makes to keep and uphold that thing to be it updated. so much. The agendas at school, were you the kid that used it? No. I, I never once fucking used it. And yeah. I always go, why am I missing all my shit? Yeah. Well, look at the girl over there. Jenda's full. She has straight A's. Yeah. <laughs> full of notes and dates and yeah, for sure. That wasn't me. But now mm -hmm. it has to be because you're running mm -hmm. all running all this and running all that. And you're you're already organized as fuck. I need to that's where I'm headed. So it was awesome. Four days off last week. Yeah, Watched movies yeah. twice in a row. Two days in a row went to the movies. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. Oh yeah, that is right. Yeah, yeah. You're talking I'm about like, that. what do I do with off time? I don't have uh -huh. off time. I didn't know what to do. You got to go live so you can go get more shit to talk about. Well, yeah, I guess that too. <laughs> that too. I mean, even going and seeing new movies and shit. Like, I mean. Oh, man. The last two movies I watched were the shit. So mm -hmm. talk about those next time. Uh, oh, next yeah. week, Freeway Rick Ross. Yes. All right, guys. The next episode is a guest episode, and we will take it from there. Hell yeah. Anything else you want to say? Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy late birthday to Marty. Just passed. Good episode. Oh, oh, oh. Good, good episode. Where's your, where was your eh, eh, on that one, uh, motherfucker? Damn, that's, you should have hit it with your foot uh -huh. as you were doing it. Yeah, was scared the slipping. fuck out of me. Um, yo, don't they have the little pads? You can, can have an extension. Yeah, yeah, I could. I could figure it we'll out. We'll figure, figure this out, up. guys. New set coming. Sick. Fuck yeah! I think that's everything. Hell yeah! Good episode. Thank you so much for everyone out there. Been asking. Here it is. Marty at the table. Finally got it done. Finally figured out how to do it. Both other cameras are dead. It's hard so though. You see, see, we we do have to figure it out a little more. Yeah. But it's trial run. Yeah, First yeah. one ever. Now we know your life, except we don't know all the pieces in it. We just know the skeleton. So at least we know where you're from. Yeah. Where you came from. Exactly. What was going bit. on. Please pop up some motherfucking pictures in this edit. Mm -hmm. I want the people to see the pictures you <laughs> oh, sent me God. and go, oh, Marty, you do not look like Marty. <laughs> I love those pictures. Uh -huh. If you had to blur faces, blur faces. Yeah, yeah. What you eat don't make me shit picture makes uh -huh. me laugh. I have it saved. Nice. I love it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs>
the jorts, the biggest shorts of all, all time. time. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. You're from East LA with those shorts, bro. Jesus I swear to God. Christ. Um, you look like you're about to do a soldier boy dance in those shorts, man. I love it. I lo- That's wow. the times. That's what time it was. 2000 something. Uh-huh. 2005. I get it. Um, for the sake of ranting, I'm going to stop myself. Right. It's been three fucking hours. <laughs> Guys, this has been Marty O'Neill episode. This has been the Jurassic Graphics episode. This is the other half of the show. All right. Here it is. You guys asked for it. It finally got here. Leave a motherfucking comment. Let us know what you guys want to see. Leave a comment. Let us know who you want to see. I think that's about it. Thank you, guys. Everything. Thank you guys so much. Dope as usual. Dot store. Uh, We're having more new merch. As you can see, uh, the unreleased shirt on Marty's. (laughs) It's puff print, so it's really thick. Unreleased push trees hat. I see Marty have on. the exclusives going. Yeah, we got some new shit. Marty's dripping an unreleased business today. (laughs) Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been... Another episode of the Dope As Usual podcast from Marty and I. Have a dope ass day. I'm hot. You look, you're about to say something else. It looked like you were nah. about to say something else. You were. I could see. I'm going to just stop for yeah, next yeah. time. Yo, I don't know how, but I got really high off those joints. Right? Perfect.